Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and uh, today I'm here to give a short introduction and help you out with your application for Corona program for scholars and uh, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine Research Elective. I'm Boris Matre, uh, I have been uh, the Corona scholar for the year 2023. Uh, uh, three. Uh, I I was a research scholar and visiting medical students at uh, Johns Hopkins School of Medicine uh, in the department of uh, GYNOB uh, in the division of uh, Reproductive Sciences and Women's Health Research. And uh, currently I'm a final year medical student at St. J.S. Medical College and KM Hospital, Mumbai. Uh, so recently a lot of people have been texting me to ask about either Kurana scholarship or uh, Johns Hopkins elective about how to apply and many doubts regarding some aspects of the scholarship etc so I thought it will be better to do this session so that uh, it stays on YouTube uh, for you all to refer again and again and so that uh, it uh, is helpful to a lot of people and also a kind of selfish reason too so that I don't have to repeat it again and again uh, because of my recently uh, hectic schedule. So without any further ado, let's hop on to the video. And just to uh, give a disclaimer at the beginning, uh, this video has been made only for educational purposes for prospective applicants of either the Corona Program for Scholars or uh, Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine Research electives. Uh, more so the international uh, medical student applicants. Uh, this video is made on a personal basis to help you all out and is in no way affiliated to or approved by or endorsed by or sponsored by uh, Corona Program for Scholars or its affiliate that is the Department of Biotechnology of Government of India, uh, Indo-US uh, Science and Technology uh, Forum that is IUS IUSSTF or Winstep Forward or Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine or any other institution for that matter. Although the uh, video is made in the best interest of the prospective applicants and I will try my best to present uh, the information to the best of my knowledge, I take no responsibility or liability whatsoever for the correctness of the information. For the most um, screenshots from the websites, portals, etc. have been shown here are only for us the said educational purposes and are the property of the respective copyright owners of those websites and I do not claim any ownership to them. Uh, so thank you. And additionally, uh, I would like to uh, tell you all that uh, uh, I would uh, be explaining the research, uh, uh, I would be explaining the application process for either of the things. So, uh, however, uh, this is again to reiterate that this is just to help out. I would request that please, please, please do your own homework, especially when these are two such big opportunities. So uh, it is quintessential that uh, and it is imperative that you have to do your own homework and uh, uh, there is no one to uh, spoon, uh, there should not be anybody to spoon feed you all for this. If there are any specific doubts, uh, I'm always uh, happy to help everyone. Uh, but since everybody is, uh, has been asking, uh, so just to make it a little easier, I'm making this uh, video. However, like uh, you all should also be a little smart enough to, um, or like dedicated enough to put in the uh, efforts from your side as well. And that being said, uh, I'm. Uh, this video is also uh, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the Quran program for scholars. This video is also going to be a little focused from the medical student perspective, uh, because usually we, we medical students uh, do not know about uh, such uh, opportunities. Uh, when, uh, and this program being a little uh, uh, more inclined inclined towards biotechnology, bioengineering, bi uh, and basic sciences, etc. So uh, uh, there are not, of, not a lot of people who would guide uh, in this matter. So I would also give a little more tips or like insights uh, from the medical students perspective of it. So uh, let's go ahead with it. So starting with uh, the Corona program for scholars. So what is it? It is a scholarship program or a 
funding program, uh, which is a tripartite uh, arrangement between the D Department of Biotechnology of Government of India, uh, the uh, Winstep Forward uh, Organization, and the Indo-US Science and Technology Forum, that is IUSSTF, that is the DBT, WSF, and IUSSTF. So this program provides opportunities to Indian students to undertake research internships at premier U.S. universities each summer for a period of 10 to 12 weeks. Although there are some points to note here, I would be covering them in the next session, uh, in the next uh, few slides. However, to give a brief uh, intro, the objectives uh, are to like provide opportunities and exposure and world-class research for, uh, facilities to promote research and capacity building uh, uh, through uh, a cooperation to uh, encourage people to take research as a career and to uh, pave way to long-term uh, uh, research and development linkages and collaborations and so on. So the thing is, one important thing uh, to note here is that the Kurana program for scholars, I would like I would like to term it as that is more or less like a funding program. It's a scholarship program that is it would provide you funding in certain aspects. Uh, it is not a exchange program per se, so please don't call it like that because uh, it's not going to place you directly into the institutions. Uh, uh, and I'll be uh, elaborating more on that in the field uh, for the slides however when i say it provides you funding so it provides you with a round trip uh, air freight like this to and fro uh, international tickets by economic class uh, and the shortest route that is they give you uh, two to three options uh, uh, through using the economic class for the set dates uh, from uh, your institution or uh, it might be your home institution as well or sort of from your home address as well uh, to the us host institution and back all right uh, and the tickets are directly booked for you uh, uh, and you don't have to book uh, it yourselves and this statement which i made uh, which is written in the slide is exactly from the uh, information given by the program uh, the, a stipend uh, is given for your duration of internship uh, for example for 2023 it was a total of uh, us dollars 3000 uh, for the entire duration then health insurance uh, so what in our year uh, it was uh, like uh, we had to buy the insurance ourselves uh, for the duration of stay and uh, that is going to be uh, reimbursed uh, to us now after the internship and uh, this is the last one is not about funding but the another benefits uh, of the program is like uh, you will also be provided a certificate of uh, internship or uh, completion of internship uh, after you submit the required documentation at least that's what's been told to us so as I rightly, as I said before, uh, the stipend, health insurance, and certificate of internship is according to the 2023 cycle. Uh, it might change for the coming uh, cycle. However, the round trip airfare is uh, the statement is from the uh, new the new uh, FAQs PDF as well. So I think this stays the same. So what is not provided and what would the scholar uh, need to cover on their own is the accommodation costs and living costs, the visa fees and the tuition or bench fees uh, uh, on his or her own. So however, as exceptions and what happened to a lot or uh, what happened for a lot of my uh, co-scholars is that uh, they either were given accommodation uh, uh, through, the inst uh, through their host in institute or were waived that tuition or bench fees. Uh, so as rightly said, the host uh, institution uh, or the faculty, uh, either ways, uh, uh, may help to cover the cost of the housing or may waive the tuition or bench fees, if any, uh, or cover them. However, for myself, uh, I was not waived of any of the costs. Uh, and I will be telling what were the costs in, the, in, a, like, in a short time. 
uh, I was not aware of because it was not in the hands of my respected mentor. Uh, however, I prefer the learning experience and the quality of learning and hence I went ahead with it and I always wanted to uh, work and learn from the mentor and uh, I didn't mind paying it and I paid it from the intern in internship stipend uh, ultimately. Right. And similarly for accommodation, I paid it from my internship stipend and I kind of tried to manage it. Uh, however, many of my scholars did get uh, a waivers and accommodation. So now, if you want to apply, if you're a prospective uh, applicant, uh, and probably that's why you're watching this video, where to find this information and where to apply. Just go to the website which has been uh, uh, told it is the website of IUSSTF. Uh, and uh, it has a lot of information, but specifically the uh, link for Corona program has been uh, uh, given here. And uh, as you can see, there is a lot of information there. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend and urge you to read the website dedicatedly. And there is a lot of information which is available here. Okay, so there is, as you can see, uh, it has been uh, like, the program is in the honor of Dr. Hargobind Khurana, who won the Nobel Prize for his work in uh, chemistry and biology. And uh, they have given the objectives, elig eligibility and funding, the awards, that is uh, the past uh, uh, Khurana scholars and their uh, information, that is their whole, uh, home institute and their host institute, and as well as resources. Uh, so, if like again, this is a huge scholarship, and you all should take some eff efforts as well to go to the website and read all the available uh, information, which is uh, readily available, need properly, so that you don't miss any information and you are able to apply properly. So, if you have any questions per se, you should actually ideally go to the resources section of their website as I show. As I've shown here, and there is the brochure, the FAQs, and the guidelines. It is highly and strictly recommended that uh, you all read the FAQs and guidelines, and everything, almost everything, is given there. Uh, although I've tried to, and in fact, this PPT has been made. In fact, my application last year, I had no one to guide per se. Uh, actually, I did uh, contact a couple of people, and they did uh, help me out briefly, and I thank. Uh, to Chinmay and uh, Gaurav for their immense, immense help. Uh, uh, those who, uh, they were the scholars of the 2020 cycle, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, but however, a major part of it, uh, I did uh, find it out on my own. I uh, I figured it out on my own is what I'll say and that was using these FAQs and guidelines and they are really self-explanatory and self-sufficient. So please do go give them a read and this PPT also in fact has been made uh, referring to those uh, latest PDFs. And uh, in spite of that, if any, uh, if, if there is any program related doubt, uh, for example, if the website is not working, if you're not able to uh, log in or anything of that, please uh, like uh, email uh, IUSSTF uh, on this email. Again, this is also given on the website. So uh, this is for you. Okay, so now going ahead with the actual uh, uh, walk through some guidance and some uh, uh, so and solving queries uh, briefly. So what is the eligibility? Only Indian students cu currently enrolled at a recognized institute of higher education in India. So basically, you should be Indian students, in, like Indian citizens, and your college or, or university or uh, institute should be based in India. Who are eligible final year, medic, uh, final year students uh, in any of the shown uh, uh, degrees, that is uh, biotechnology, uh, uh, it could be the B.Tech, M.Tech, or B.Sc, M.Sc, or B.E.M.E. Uh, either of those uh, or master's science or uh, integrated bsms or uh, veterinary, uh, veterinary students or uh, pharmacy students or uh, mbbs students or uh, mmst students at recognized institutions of higher education in 
as I said, the biotechnology and allied areas are eligible to apply. Now, I, uh, although I did not get this query in the form, but uh, this is what uh, I just thought while making the PPT. Uh, so technically, uh, students of uh, uh, dentistry, uh, uh, physical therapy or physiotherapy and occupational therapy, they are also uh, technically uh, health sciences and uh, allied areas of biotechnology. In fact, I'll say uh, from my from speaking to my uh, firstly, I'm a huge fan of uh, rehabilitative sciences and their role in uh, the management of patients. And uh, in fact, there are a lot of uh, the role of technology and innovation heavily plays a role there. So. Uh, although these uh, degrees are not mentioned here, I would highly urge you all to uh, uh, give it a thought and uh, to know about your eligibility, you can probably uh, email IUSSTF and know if you're eligible this year or at least uh, if you're already seniors, I would like probably urge you all to email IUSSTF for, for your juniors for the next year application or something because this is a huge uh, opportunity. Now, uh, the applicant should have uh, a CGPA of 8 or higher or percentage of 80% of higher. This is uh, for all other branches except for medicine. That is, if you're an MBBS student, you should have a minimum. Uh, there's an exception for MBBS students that you should have a minimum of 65% because uh, generally uh, MBBS students' uh, uh, scores are not given in that high range uh, as a norm. So, in the previous year only, uh, you should have a 65% or more. Okay. Uh, that is like if you're a third year student, uh, the eligibility will be decided on the second year mark uh, scores. Okay. So, how do I know this? Is uh, because they ask only the latest mark sheet and they have strictly mentioned that. Okay. Uh, and that's given in the FAQ as well. Uh, they're not given like they're not given about whether sixty five percent applies to the uh uh whether all the previous years or just the uh, uh just the immediate previous year but they have asked only for the latest mark sheet and nothing else so uh I think it's a given assumption that uh, it's the previous mark uh, previous marks only and anyways uh, as you will come to know in the uh, for the slides, uh, you don't really have an option to uh, tell your, uh, if you're in the third year, you don't really have an option to tell your first year marks. So uh, you'll come to know about that. Then uh, only those candidates who have a minimum of one year remaining for the completion of the course in India are eligible. And uh, uh, first year final years and PhD students are not eligible to apply. So this is pretty understandable from uh, for uh, students of other courses. However, it's kind of different for MBBS students in the sense that essentially in MB uh, MBBS in India is a 5.5 and a half years program, uh, including the internship because we graduate after the internship. Our graduation is after the completion of the internship. So essentially we are still students during the internship period. Hence, if we are to call uh, like again, different colleges of india call the years differently but uh just for standardization right now if i were to call the years as uh, first year second year third year or third first and fourth year or third second and the internship as these are the five phases or uh, i don't know what like then you can uh, apply during the second year third year and the fourth years that is the second year or third first and third second or the final or the stereo or the year say or the stereotypical final year okay so that uh, that is you cannot apply during your first year on the internship year so the basic idea here is that you should be uh, you should be having a student status when you uh, go there uh, for internship uh, in the coming year all right so if you apply even uh, during a final year of mbbs you would be still a uh, student when you are an intern when you go next year so you need not uh, you can apply in the final year and the, uh, uh, my one of my course scholars was uh, a final year when she was she applied and uh, intern when she uh, 
went again internship is a student year for medical students and i don't want it to be confused by other students uh, uh, students of other courses uh, so please uh, note it for other courses so uh, it's quite self explanatory explanatory so don't worry about that and that's a preferably pre final year students so that is for us it could be uh, for medical students it could be you can apply during your third year or fourth year ideally second year might be too early because possibly your uh, like again possibilities are endless i don't want to demotivate or discourage you all people do phenomenal work during their uh, first year as well so and second first year and second year and even during your their pre medical years so if you are if you want to apply during your second year you can still apply okay although they are not recommending it uh, because of the time required okay so uh, sorry so uh, a related faq for the eligibility was i am yet to receive my official mark sheet from the university or something like that what should i do so they have asked only your late only the latest mark sheet has to be uh, uh, submitted that is uh, for example uh, i am from uh, uh, say gs medical college that is affiliated to the maharashtra university of health sciences that is muhs so let's say if uh, i am applying in my third year i did get my official mark sheet uh, printed mark sheet from muhs of the first year however the second year uh, marks are declared online but i haven't got a uh, uh, second year mark sheet in hard copy what do i do uh, is i print it and uh, uh, i attest it from a gazetted officer which could be a professor or a academic dean or hod something like that and uh, you could submit it and that's what even i had did if i remember correctly uh, Uh, second year mark sheet i had gotten it uh, attested from my pharmacology hod if i'm not wrong yeah if i if i remember correctly so that's what i had done so this might be a common thing uh, common occurrence for uh, mbba students so so just to note here so what will be uh, what will the research internship entail so the program information says that it involves application for research in biotechnology and allied areas which includes agriculture food health biomedical sciences and interdisciplinary areas like computational uh, data uh, data sciences and machine learning etc outside this subject fields uh, the uh, application would not be uh, considered so what what does, does this mean for mbba students as a personal input your primary project in the internship should uh, i'm sorry for the disturbance Uh, your primary project in the internship should hence be related to basic sciences uh, or in other words pre or para clinical laboratory research involving bench work that is you actually do uh, research using uh, like you know using animal species using chemicals using a microscopy using what not okay like basically laboratory research or translation research which could include a computation uh, ai ml etc but it should be related to uh, health and biology like okay it should be an interdisciplinary uh, uh, thing so if you are thinking that uh, you want to do purely clinical research that might not be allowed as your primary research so uh, keep that in mind but uh, i love laboratory and pre and para clinical sciences basic sciences and the power that a translation that translational research holds so i'll still highly recommend medical students to do that and uh, if you're thinking uh, in terms of your future go you know future goals future aspects future prospects sorry it is still a big opportunity it is worth it i'll say all right so what is the duration and time of internship so it's 10 to 12 weeks each summer and again the summer is not the indian summer but the summer of us that is from mid may to end july uh, alterations extensions in the internship uh, dates uh, may uh, be done in consultation with the parent and the host institution like basically based on a mutual uh, understanding that is uh, if you are for example if you are final year student and you are 
institute is not allowing uh, sorry if you're a third year student who wants to go in your final year and your institute is not allowing uh, you could probably apply uh, in your final year and go during your internship or something like that however regardless the funding benefits would not change that is if you plan to do it for like three months instead of uh, or two and a half months or even more than that or if, if you want to do it some later month or something like that uh, your benefits would still stay the same you won't get uh, extra money or, or less money than what uh, they have promised uh, similarly for the health insurance similarly for the airfare all right uh, so hence so for MBBS students you can uh, schedule it du during a relatively free period during your MBBS internship of course that is if you're uh, selected and here I mean MBBS internship <laughs> uh, or maybe a period like the break during the university exams and their results so uh, for those who have enough gap like uh, amateurs uh, students so uh, and so on so there was one related query that uh, the scholarship is around 10 weeks so how did i manage my clinical postings attendance in medical school during final year or uh, or was it given uh, on duty or anything like that so essentially i took permission from the uh, respective authorities of uh, in my institute uh, 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 for which I'll uh, tell uh, from uh, GSMC uh, students, I'll tell in the f uh, future slides of what I did uh, in detail. But uh, I did take permissions, and no, I was not given free attendance like that. My clinical postings, uh, I am do. Uh, I, uh, I, it was like I, uh, it was agreed that I will have to do repeat postings, and all my. Uh, Posting cycles were getting over in the first week of October. That is recently they got completed and now and it was agreed that I will be doing uh, the repeat posting for the missed period. Uh, and that's what I'm doing now. All right. Uh, and uh, also the point that uh, uh, two weeks of the internship also went uh, like uh, in my official uh, official leave given by MUHS the summer break summer vacation which is given so that reduces the number of repeats uh, the duration of the repeat posting so ultimately the point is that you have to manage your posting um, and again it would depend differently for different institutions some institutions might not be okay with that and you have to respect their decision and probably try to ask them about doing it in the internship period which uh, you can extend uh, for uh, uh, you know for various reasons for such valid reasons and especially such prestigious uh, scholarship by the government of india right so again that's your lookout on how to manage that all right uh, sorry i have this habit of uh, saying all right now co coming to the parent institute consideration that is your medical college or uh, your college or institute in India. Uh, I tend to say uh, medical because mine is a medical college. So you have to obtain a no objection certificate from your home uh, or parent institute or college uh, that they are allowing you for such an internship for the said period. Now wh what is the format of the NOC is given on the application portal of uh, the Kurana scholarship it is not given in the FAQs, but once you log in, uh, which I'll be telling again in a f uh, in the further slides, there is the format is given, which I've also shown on in this uh, as a screenshot on this slide. So for MBBS students, I have this personal tips that please please get it confirmed for for sure, okay, from an institute about whether they will allow. Often this kind of also often this kinds of uh, permissions take quite a lot of running around document work from various authorities and I, and hence i suggest to start working on this as soon as possible and not keep it for last minute in order to avoid last minute hassles because last minute you definitely have a lot of other things to worry about like your essays so please don't keep it for for later uh so to be honest, for me, I would say it was quite easy because I had my uh, lab internship uh, done. So uh, and my uh, professors uh, uh, were very supportive uh, in that aspect. So they really helped me out uh, 
with the lors uh, uh and in terms of the institution um, i uh, i really explained to them why it is important how big of an opportunity uh, is uh, is this which it, which it is which it uh, indeed is right so uh it it depends on your uh what do you call it your uh explanation or uh convincing skills for that matter and uh, trust me like for gsmc students trust me our college is really really supportive i mean like see i have had a uh, good attendance in all of the uh, postings other than uh, the one which i was probably going to miss if i was selected so i didn't have repeats per se so it is unlike my other batchmates so i could afford to do a, a repeat uh, po posting for the missed period of the khurana internship uh, i could afford to do it now before mhs so uh, uh exams and still be eligible along with uh, the the batch uh so what do you have to do for the like basically uh, coming back to the permissions so you have to uh, uh take permission from the from your respective uh, postings department according to your timetable and then uh, request dean uh, request the respective academic dean or uh, or respected dean ma'am uh, for the uh, noc Uh, for this year to uh, go and uh, it would be better to uh, uh, go and talk to the ug office uh, and you can tell to them um, that it is similar to what uh, i did last porus did last year so uh, they might uh, they might know they might remember okay uh, and uh, here as you can see it's btech uh, mtech msc student like just change it to mba students of course put some brains like that or duration you can get 10 to 12 weeks and jsmc uh, students they might ask you a specific uh, dates but since it's just a pre application noc or uh, explain to them that and you can write a broad period that uh, mid may to uh, end july or something like that uh because uh, although it's not a requirement of uh, khurana to mention the period but our uh, college does require but if you can you manage to uh, get that off uh, uh it's better because you know that uh, then you won't have to uh, take a repeat noc later on if if at all uh, it happens that you had to uh, change your uh, time schedule of your internship uh, slightly okay and now host institute considerations that will i be allotted the us host institution or do i have to choose on my own so i did get a lot of queries on this so successful applications have to identify the own uh, us host that is based uh, on the matching research interests what does this mean is that khurana program is you can call it a funding program that is that is it will be funding you or uh, using the said benefits uh, which i spoke about a few slides back to do your internship it is not going to place you directly uh, in the uh, in with an, any uh, institute so whom can you do it with literally any mentor any university of your choice and of course subject to whether they accept you like but naturally okay you have to find it out on your own they are not going to place you directly although they might help you in some ways like uh, emailing the professors but it's like they are emailing it you emailing it's technically you have to find a position of your own now this position you might be already having accepted if you are anyways planning a research internship uh, in the us uh, or you can uh, do that after you go, after you are informed of the selection as well or uh, if you are financially or economically challenged uh, uh it might be a better option that uh, you uh, you reach out to mentors only after only and if you get uh, provisionally selected for the program uh, uh so that you know it should not be like you know uh, i don't want to say like this but uh, if your mentor uh, uh 
in the us accepts you but if you don't get the scholarship you will have to manage your uh, funding on your own which is uh, if you are as i said if you are uh, financially uh, if uh, challenged then that might be difficult so that's a consideration i would like you to have however uh, that being said if you do not have uh, uh, if you do not have a uh, accepted position already this is not the time to email professors and get for an acceptance all right uh, and you do have to mention five uh, prospective mentors uh, which i'll be talking about a little later so uh, just wait for that now how to apply so when you go to the website as, as i have shown uh, in this uh, slide as a screenshot uh you would see here at the bottom of the page that uh you have to there's this orange link which you can click on uh, which will you redirect you to the online application portal for visitation programs and the link also have given here technically all right no hard copies or email applications are allowed whatsoever so once you go there you have to uh uh, register yourself uh, you have to make an account there and you have to uh, verify that account using uh, um, email sent to you on your uh, which you have given them okay uh, you have to check your uh, spam junk if you do not receive this email and if you still don't uh, receive in spite of checking spam etc firstly check <laughs> your email id whether you uh, put it correctly if not uh, email or uh, iusstf uh, okay not on this uh, uh, email uh, email to scholars at uh, no, scholar at uh, iusstf the one which i uh, gave in the previous slide uh, so deadline for the application is 31st october 2023 is like literally in uh, 15 to 16 days depending on where, when i upload upload this to youtube so the time is short so please start turning the wheels around and like uh sorry i think that was uh, not a correct phrase to use but like please uh start working on it uh, on your application if you're interested to apply this year don't keep it till the last moment so once you go to the application portal now i'll go by uh, each uh, a question of the application portal i'll go through it uh, one by one so uh, they ask whether uh, uh, whether we are in a uh, previous recipient so uh, yes or no uh, so it should it would ideally be no for a lot of you i'm not sure whether uh, if anybody uh, is reapplying because that might reduce the chances anyways but again that's not a but that's not the scope of the video because if you have applied uh, if you have already received you would not require this video in the first place so your name first name middle name and surname middle name is not required surname uh, and middle uh, first name is required if there are some people who do not have a surname uh, or something like that i would suggest you to uh, uh, reach out to iusstf for uh, regarding the same uh gender again it's this is quite self-explanatory passport uh, again if you have a passport you select yes and you might have to upload the password a uh, passport uh, let's see I, I don't remember uh but if you have uh, if you don't have it select applied for passport and of course even if you haven't applied like apply asap for the passport so that you know by the time the results come out you would be done with the passport uh, processes uh so and the name of the university uh so there there is a list of universities if it is if there is not uh your parent institution for example for me it is sergius medical college in km hospital so what i had uh so i don't remember whether it was in the list but uh if it is not there what you have to do is search other sorry uh, click on other and type it for my college students type state g dot s dot medical college and a and d voila and uh, k dot e dot m dot hospital all right say gs medical college and km hospital don't write comma mumbai or anything like that 
and I don't remember whether it was there or uh, last year, but it might be added this year because I was a previous uh, uh, scholar, so they might have added uh, now. Type of institution for uh, they have given various options for uh, KEM or GSMC students, it will be a public institution. All right, uh, address. Uh, Uh, put your college uh, address uh, uh, in the first uh, first field, your home address in the second field, uh, and uh, mm, then uh, telephone number. Uh, so I do not have any line line number. Uh, so I just put uh, mobile numbers for both of it, and. Uh, it's always recommended that even if it's alternative telephone number is not uh, available, do put uh, one of some your parents or something like that. All right. Uh, and uh, uh, email, personal email ID only. Do not give your uh, college email ID. That is for KM students. Do do not give your address km.edu email ID. Okay because this email id is going to like for those who are selected this email id is going to stay in their uh record this is what i guess okay i'm not again this is not told by iost for a uh, korana program or any of its partners but i believe that this is so because this is going to stay in their uh, records for their long-term collaboration and opportunities right so if you graduate uh, then uh, the, your institutional email ID might access might go away. So hence uh, provide your personal email ID only. For major fields, there are uh, list. Uh, there is a list given. Uh, for MBBS students, select other and in the field which comes up, write medicine. Uh, degree program MBBS would appear. So select MBBS. Uh, uh, then percentage of CGPA. As I told, uh, eligibility criteria is 80 percent. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, CGP 8.0 and uh, or 80 percent or higher for other courses. For MBBS, it's 65 percent or more. So do put that here. Expected date of graduation. Uh, uh, for MBB again, other courses you all know it well. I would like to hi highlight here that. For um, as I said earlier, your graduation month and year is after you complete your internship. So ideally, uh, put your uh, if you know a date, uh, month and year of your convocation, you can put uh, that. If not, uh, put a tentative uh, date uh, as per your uh, you know date of completion of internship. For example, I put uh, May 2025. Uh, I I started my MBBS in 2019, so for me it would be May 2025, and this is actually applicable for everything. Uh, people usually wrongly mention that, uh, for example, my batch 2019 to 2024, but no, we graduate after our internship, so it should always be 20, uh, 2019 to 2025, except for some institutes like Ames. Who graduate who would graduate in 2024 itself because their exams uh, get over in December itself. So even the internship would get over in December itself. So them mentioning till 2024 is correct. But for a lot of other colleges, uh, uh, it goes to the next year. So uh, 2025 uh, would be correct for 2019 batch and so on. Okay, academic record uh, 10 standard onwards. So 10th and 12th. Uh, so as uh, somebody rightly asked, did you did I mention other than 10, 10, 12 marks need score a first year mark sheet? No, I didn't. I just mentioned um, HSC and SSC. That is uh, 12th and 10th marks. Uh, 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 sorry, details. Uh, because I don't I don't know why first year did not mention. Probably because uh, there was no field uh, like that to enter. So I don't remember, but of course, definitely not need score. Need score was your entrance exam. It is not a degree, or it is not a. a of, it is not. A, what what do you call? It? It's not an educational period. I don't know what to call it, but definitely not your need. I, I uh, J E and all those scores. Definitely not. First year mark sheet. First year marks. 
a second year even second year marks for that matter i had not put in here okay so uh, second year marks uh, percentage had put uh, in the previous question in the 10th question so uh, for this uh, 12th uh, question that is academic record i just put 10th and 12 marks then next question being uh, whether i am comfortable with uh, some specific species i had put yes for everything research statement uh, now this is a big part of the uh, big part of the application so again as like it is very clearly mentioned what is research statement and what they want to know so they want you to briefly describe what your research interests are and possible areas you might pursue during corona internship have they asked for long detailed protocols no so they don't uh, they haven't asked uh, anything like that and they have also mentioned to ask to list five potential mentors in the U us with their uh, information so firstly talking about your research statement so to share a little experience of mine so before that uh, I was asked by someone uh, in the query also and uh, on WhatsApp texts also that whether I can share my research statement or statement of purpose or past experiences, uh, basically my essays or my LORs. So respectfully, sorry, I cannot share and uh, I apologize for that, but uh, I can't share because I consider my research statements, uh, SOPs, past experiences and LORs kind of a personal uh, uh, matter and I won't be comfortable sharing it on uh, generally or uh, in on social media platforms like this per se. So I hope you all understand. However, I can what I plan to do now is uh, giving some insights on how to write uh, uh, again my words are not the ultimatum uh, i do not uh, have the experience of the whole uh, world per se i would give you insights from my personal experiences and basically what i did there is no hard and fast way to uh, get this uh, scholarship uh, and there is no hard and fast way to write uh, any of the essays. What I would uh, suggest uh, give suggestion is based on my personal experiences. All right. So one important thing for all of the three essays, which I would uh, say is that these essays have to not have to what I what I had done in and what I recommend uh, is that your essay should tell your story. Okay, and that is another reason why uh, you should not uh, even as you know a reference uh, you should not uh, be seeing any of my this is because those are your story they should tell what your journey has been and what uh, you look up to uh, in the future uh, journey. Uh, in terms of your long term goals in terms of your short term goals or why you want this like but like you are applying to this scholarship right so uh, why do you want to uh, uh, want this scholarship or what areas you want to pursue that is totally your uh, you know uh, touch so what i had done is like personally i am interested in obgyn infertility sexual health including interdisciplinary collaboration as i told a few slides back i'm a huge fan of uh, you know interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary approach uh, including uh, the role of for, re, uh, for example rehabilitative sciences for example uh, biomedical engineering and biotechnology for example data sciences artificial intelligence machine learning etc and uh, like the role of public health for that matter the role of uh, uh, activism uh, and advocacy in healthcare this is something which interests me because health cannot be seen as a standalone or an isolated field but it is an uh, as rightly taught in public health or preventive and social medicine or community medicine health is a 
इंटीग्रेटेड हेल्थ इज अ इंटरप्ले ऑफ वेरियस डिटर्मिनेंट्स इट कुड बी सोशल डिटर्मिनेंट्स इट कुड बी देर इज सो मेनी डिटर्मिनेंट्स ऑफ हेल्थ एंड यू कॉन्ट लुक एट हेल्थ एज अ आइसोलेटेड इन एन आइसोलेटेड वे इट हैज टू बी what do you say integrated approach is what i'll say so that's what i had mentioned in uh, like in uh, i had tried to put it in uh, small small sentences in uh, all of my essays so in my research statement uh, i did big, uh, begin with telling what my interests are uh, research interests and career interests in general about obgyn and stuff and why why those are a huge problem basically give like those in what is what is the need of uh, doing research in this field etc i did give basically give a background and introduction to everything and the need of the r i explained that and uh, uh, where things are lacking uh, and so on and hence uh, why uh, i think research and innovation uh, would be important in this field okay so as you can see like i started with the knee like my one sentence about my interests then the need of the r the background and then saying that uh, like you know uh, why uh, this why research is now needed uh, basically first i told about the problem and then i told about why research is needed and then i briefly mentioned about some research ideas i had again firstly you, you do not definitely you do not have enough uh, word count uh, it just sorry it, it is just 1000 words and you definitely i don't know about others but for all the three essays i really fell short of uh, you know i really fell above the word limit always and i had to do extensive uh, editing to bring it to word limit so definitely for anybody giving a detailed protocol is not possible so i but i did uh, uh mention uh, uh two to three ideas which i had and uh, told uh, the background of it and i told uh, what i plan to do and then uh, additional uh, uh a couple of uh, ideas uh, just in uh, like two to three words like you know enumerating kind of a thing uh, i mentioned that and i mentioned the uh, mentors who i wanted to work with so that being said uh, i did mention five names uh, and about how to look for mentors there is a query on that so just as a break uh, i will uh, Uh, answer that uh, about how to uh, choose mentors and how to uh, look for mentors etc in a later uh, in a in a later in a later question okay so this being said uh, i will now pause uh, uh, let's take a break of uh, 20 or uh, 2 30 seconds because even y'all have been uh, staring at the screen continuously for probably a uh, quite long probably an hour if i'm not wrong oh uh, so just now look uh, 20 meters away uh, for 20, uh, 20 to 30 seconds rest for a while and even i will rest uh, as i have been speaking continuously just for 20 uh, 20 ish seconds okay moving ahead with the queries related to it so what was the general uh, approach to writing it okay sorry i kind of retyped the same query uh, twice uh, did you make it a technical or a more essay like as i said 
I made it more like essay type and all the three uh, questions, uh, all the three answers, in fact, I made it like an essay, uh, as I told you, I made it sound like a story. Each of my answers were was connected to the uh, to the next answer. So basically, it's like there are three questions, right? First is your research statement on what you want to do, uh, what you plan to do. Oh, basically, what are my fields fields of interest, and what do I plan to do uh, in the internship? Uh, possible areas I want I might want to explore. Second question is the uh, SOP, wherein um, we have to mention a uh, career goal, short term and long term, and what do I hope to gain from this internship? And uh, lastly, uh, what are the past experiences? So I kind of mention like how uh, these are my uh, interests and this is what are possible these are my ideas and why are they important is what i mentioned in the st uh, statement of purpose which i will elaborate a little later and for that what i have done till date if i had to speak in hindi for a uh, uh, hindi speaker who those who understand hindi like basically kia kia kya hai kya ukhada hai ab tak uh, to deserve this scholarship like starting with ki kya uh, मुझे ये मुझे इसमें क्यों इंटरेस्ट है किसमें इंटरेस्ट है क्यों इंटरेस्ट है और क्या करना है अगर मिली तो पर क्यों इंटरेस्ट है इज बिकॉज लाइक दिस आर माई लॉन्ग टर्म गोल्स मुझे जिंदगी में ये करना है पर ये करने के लिए ये इंटर्नशिप डिजर्व करने के लिए मैंने अभी तक लाइफ में क्या उखाड़ा है वॉज वुड बी द लास्ट द थर्ड क्वेश्चन इज वॉट यू नो would be in a very colloquial uh, way if i had to uh, answer that uh, question i hope this was understandable and i'll uh, i mentioned about the research question uh, research statement i would also elaborate about the uh, next questions in the upcoming slides do we need to write a proposal for the research project uh, which we so again it is quite self explanatory what has been written that brief description of the research interest and possible areas again i did mention a couple of uh, research ideas which i want to do but they haven't even asked that they have like asked research interest and possible areas so you do you like it is totally your choice what you want to write again of course detailed proposal detailed protocol you cannot write because uh, there is not enough uh, words word limit word count available but uh, definitely not a proposal per se but uh, it does not harm uh, mentioning a couple of ideas if you have any but again it's not mandatory from what i understand okay then the next question is if i had a query regarding type of topic to apply for does one on biotech yield better results if you have any idea please do give an insight uh to be honest i don't think i will be able to answer this because uh, ultimately as i will address in the few questions i do not know what will uh, yield better results right because the judging panel is different i am not on the judging panel i am just a simple happy go look like you know i am just a simple uh, innocent uh, past scholar and uh, i think i would not claim that i know what will make you uh, win the not win sorry get the scholarship so and again what type of topic it's totally again you should not be uh, modifying your research topic or interest to thinking of how uh, you know of what would fetch you the scholarship in fact while writing i had this phase wherein you i was about uh, in my first draft or something no not first draft in my second draft or something i had written some things which were not just not me but my uh, friend shruti she pointed it out that uh, pointed out that and she's like and which made me realize like just for the sake of the scholarship you do not have to lie anything and in my actual application i really spoke from my heart and uh, mentioned everything truthfully about what really my research interest and what i really want to do 
and not just for the sake of the scholarship okay the scholarship is definitely a, a big thing no doubt but don't wear a mask for the scholarship is what i'll say i don't want to get into the philosophical side of it but um, this is one a tip from my limited very 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 limited experience uh, of applications in general has been that please be uh, truthful and write in a good way of course but write the truth okay that's what i would i would suggest next is uh, what was uh, my thought process to streamline five potential mentors i wanted to work with did i submit more than five uh, in terms of actually researching for who we want our mentors to be what specific parameters should we keep in mind so what parameters uh, uh, should we keep in mind and what was my thought process so it was like i uh, the mentor who i actually had for my uh, ment uh, for my program uh, who i uh, ultimately got for my program is somebody who i have been looking up to since a long time and i have been inspired from his researches and uh, have seen uh, like you know i have read his articles and publications and discussed uh, his work about endometriosis and uh, the role of basic sciences and the acap 13 and all of that with my professor so i have always been uh, looking up to dr seegers uh, uh, as a role model uh, in the field of uh, reproductive sciences and um, he was the first name i had in mind and then uh, uh, i also had uh, heard a lot about uh, uh, dr rebecca uh, stone and dr valerie lynn baker uh, they are basically uh, uh, professors in um, gynecological oncology and uh, uh, reproductive endocrinology and infertility at uh, hopkins itself and i have been looking them uh, looking up uh, to their work uh, and getting very uh, getting hugely inspired from them as well and additionally uh, i did put uh, a couple of more names who i was uh, highly uh, uh, inspired from um, uh, that was uh, Dr. Ruth Lati and Dr. Vittorio Sebastiano from Stanford University. Um, and I had uh, read their work on um, placental models as well. So these five names I had mentioned, uh, again, this has to be, this, this had to be confidential, but um, again, like these are the people who are like usually motivated, uh, feel motivated uh, reading them. I feel, heavily mo motivated uh, reading their work so th that's what i did not have to think to be honest so i just again the point being this is just 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 a provisional list and uh, your final mentors might be uh, like you know, could be if, if you are selected you could uh, you know a lot of times it also that your choices change and you know uh, probably in the meantime you might get an uh, acceptance anyways uh, if you are planning a research internship anyways or uh, it might uh, be like uh, your uh, sub sub field interest might change or there are a lot of factors so you are not hard and fast bound uh, you know to uh, stick to these mentors and I don't really actually know why this list of mentors has been asked because on an updated list if you are selected or uh, if you're provisionally selected or uh, you would be uh, at least for our year it was uh we were asked for a updated list but for me i knew who to approach who uh, i knew who to approach so for me it was a kind of an easy journey so if uh for you all what i would suggest is that uh, what parameters do you want to keep in mind is that firstly you should be a uh, firstly and heavily research interest if you're interested in uh, obg1 don't go doing uh, research in uh, uh, neurosciences unless you have no option again like again there's nothing as no option there is all 
doors are always open but sometimes uh, there are factors like time issues and all of that uh, which play a role all right there there will be always somebody in the us who uh, you would you know who whose research interests match uh, with you whose uh, time uh, you know period or uh, period uh, during the year uh, matches with you and who's ready to uh, accept you or something like that it to there will be certain uh, so if you don't really know already see i knew my uh, prospective uh, you know who i had to list because i do keep on reading uh, research and hence i knew who to uh, list right but if you don't have i would suggest you to read papers and to know like uh, uh, who does research in the field of your interest and that's that is what i could you know suggest you uh, and probably in some aspects uh, for medical students you might also uh, you might also want to know about uh, the university uh, if you are planning for uh, applying for uh, residency in the us uh, you might want to know about the residents uh, not residents about the possible like you know uh, whether the institute is img friendly or not but i don't think you should care about uh, it right now my johns hopkins uh, experience has been phenomenal and once in a lifetime which i will be speaking in a few uh, later on but this is i'll say a research interest is the main thing and thought process i really don't uh, like i i genuinely can't answer this to student because it was very sorted for me you know i tend to uh, be a person who always you know who who know like you know i know what i'm doing when it comes to research so this was kind of easy to do and i sorry i could if i couldn't answer it in a better way did i submit more than 5 no because already the word count is uh, limited so i did not submit more than 5 how to approach uh, for the uh, research work do we have to email beforehand about the quran scholarship and enter their details uh so these are two different questions so firstly do we have to email beforehand no they have told that you do not have to uh, email them right now uh, saying that you are planning to apply for the quran because you don't know whether you will be selected so it would be a bummer if you you know uh, it would be a issue if uh, you know you are not selected if you already have an acceptance that is if you already were going to do a research internship or research elective or whatsoever uh, with a professor and you have already gotten an acceptance uh, letter you are you have the actual you actually have the opportunity to uh, upload that with your application and i don't know whether that helps but it might help uh, because you know the the work kind of gets reduced but again i'm no one to comment on that because i'm not on the selection uh, the judges panel okay and uh, so you do not have to email beforehand uh, and you just basically those are possible prospective mentors who you look up to whose research work you look up to and uh, how to get to know the professor under whom as i said you can do un- at literally any university any lab any professor any f- not any field if the field should be within the said uh, areas which uh, we said uh, before but literally any professor from any lab and university so that's uh, the answer to that uh details uh, from the applic- uh, in the application form you would know from like all universities have their own websites and uh, you know if you are reading, reading publications so uh, the corresponding author details do have uh, contact details so that's how you come to know about that and uh, but don't uh, really uh, put in the uh, affiliations from the uh, publications because many times affiliations do change so do look for the latest paper if at all you are writing and also uh, cross check once on the university uh, website that's what i would suggest uh the next question uh, similar question i have answered and um, do we decide for a guide for the research fellowship or are we assigned no we are not assigned you have to i just said you have to look out on your own okay and find it out on your own in fact next thing being the statement of purpose
so as it is rightly said here they have mentioned that you have to indicate your career goals short term and long term and what do i hope what do you hope to uh, gain from this internship so if uh, for, again this is self explanatory but the same tips repeat here that please make it flow like a story and it has to be your story it has to be like i can't tell you why you are interested in neurology or neuro uh, neurosurgery or neurosciences for example i could like and if it, if something is your passion you should be able to talk extensively about your uh, passion right so of course the career goals might be difficult to talk about because of you no know, we are adult not adolescents we are past that but we are like young adults and it is a uh, what do you say kind of uh, uh, it is kind of a difficult time where we have to think about our future but uh, once you give it a thought you will be able to write but you like basically you would have some interest like so there is one query which is very beautiful and i will answer to that uh, just for example but uh, i did mention about how i liked uh, like uh, uh, like how what i did in like you know i'm a medical student why uh, like i started my story right from my school and my uh, uh, my college level and how i did, uh, also had interest in physics and mathematics and how uh, no i thought of uh, integration of uh, the aspects of physics probably quantum physics and like i used to have or uh, what do you say or uh, i had i had very sorry i'm stammering here because, again because this is something very personal but uh, i had a very drastic or again i i don't want to flatter or boast about myself but it was like very weird and random uh, thought you know ideas uh, ideas career aspects which i used to have in fact uh, uh, this might be a little off topic but uh, there is this uh, instagram uh, page called neil's science journal uh, uh, his uh, student uh, uh, in the us uh, again just uh, an acquaintance uh, who i find out uh, randomly on uh, instagram only he shares so much good stuff about biology and stuff and phenomenal like uh, he expresses opinions etc and whatever he reads and exactly like you know those are like it might be a little uh, what do you say uh opinions might be extreme but we need extreme opinions to uh, you know further uh, science in some ways right so uh that's so uh, that's one person who i highly relate to i i just uh, found out very recently but that's just one example that you know you can be as uh, quote unquote crazy in your you know thoughts and hence i have always been like that and i wrote uh, the uh, role of my uh, uh, of my upbringing and all of that again i really uh, genuinely i cannot uh, exactly mention what i wrote because it's very personal but i basically wrote my own story and that's what i would and i did mention about short term and long term goals and how uh, like as what do i hope to gain from this internship i basically wrote a these are my goals and how this internship would help uh, in achieving those goals all right uh, basically you do not want to do in this uh, khurana internship or whatsoever just for the sake of it i never believe uh, doing things just for the sake of it like you know i do random things for sure like you know quote unquote random stereotypically random but i do those for a bigger purpose or uh, with in alignment with my purpose or things which i like doing or right, for example even this video i kind of believe in the power of guidance and mentorship and i like to give it back uh, i have had so much support from my close friends from certain seniors from my institute etc and i just can't thank uh, 
i just can't thank uh, enough uh, so this is just a way of uh, passing it forward is what i'll say my uh, institute has been uh, uh, supportive my college has been uh, sorry my college institute has been uh, 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 supportive like trust me uh, uh, the application time was also very uh, emotionally viable uh, sorry, yeah viable period for me because of certain other issues uh, happening uh, but my friends did support me uh, all through it i would uh, and even for the application uh, i would ideally suggest you to get it reviewed your ss uh, get your ss reviewed from your close friends or your mentors like mentors as in there would be some mentor in your college uh, uh, who is guiding you right so uh, uh, for me i like shruti uh, tejas ojas and amay helped me immensely uh, either in the application process or in the mental aspects of it or uh, just motivating me through keep going um, shruti uh, and uh, rohan who has been a big 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 uh, uh, Rohan Gavankar, I mean, uh, there is another. Uh, there are many Rohans out there, but yeah. Uh, so Shruti Tilak, uh, Tejas Saha, uh, Ojas Krishnani, Amay Kundavar, and uh, Rohan uh, Gavankar, who is my like you know, family friend and my uh, uh, Rohan has been my guide, mentor, everything you know since my childhood. So I owe a lot, lot to him. Tejas so just helped me review my uh, essays. Shruti uh, Ame gave the much needed uh, emotional support, and uh, that's what I would. Uh, there was one uh, uh, actually a uh, session of uh, question on this, and I'll answer since I'm in the flow. The application process looks tough and tiring. I know, I know. Like how to keep the con uh, concentration alive. How how to write the essays which i'm telling of course but uh, uh, this support is what you will need a lot even i was like uh, i had thought that you know i don't deserve this i shouldn't apply i would not get this scholarship at all these were my thoughts literally like you know one week before the application deadline and i was so overwhelmed that you know my essays are not ready within one week of uh, like it's just one week uh, for the deadline i'm i have not written uh, the essays yet and so many questions uh, related to that but i would say that don't lose motivation find people who would keep you motivated in this time uh, uh if and for those who are doubting yourself uh, it does not harm to give it a shot right it's what, what they're not even taking any money from you to uh, apply so just go for it try like it's a huge opportunity right and i could also all be immensely grateful to padmaja samant ma'am uh, geeta ma'am chaya ma'am uh padmaja samant ma'am is uh, the uh, professor of obgyn now also the hod Geet, uh, HOD in charge, I'm not sure. And uh, Geeta ma'am, uh, who is the former professor and head and uh, currently professor emeritus of the Department of Microbiology in my institute. Cha ma'am, who is currently the uh, professor and head of the Department of, Bi uh, of uh, Microbiology of my uh, institute. And their support has been, uh, their support, the uh, uh, support of the respective departments. Geeta ma'am, Cha ma'am, basically they were, uh, they helped me. Uh, uh they all they gave me this opportunity for uh, doing uh laboratory training come internship uh, uh experience uh, in the deep, uh in the microbiology uh laboratory and i am immensely immensely thankful to them for their support throughout and the respective departments so uh, like uh for example, for my microbiology uh, internship, I rotated to all the divisions, uh, virology, uh, bacteriology, molecular biology, uh, serology, virology, mycobacteriology, parasitology. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, uh, mycology. 
of course uh, so the all the professors in the department was so so helpful i would like it just like i i would say that when you're nice to people uh, people don't mind like basically if you'll remember the quote like i don't say i'm not a harry potter fan but uh, i do remember that one quote ask for help if you like at hogwarts you will get it or something like that similarly never hesitate to ask for help and guidance and mentorship you would get it probably not from one specific person if you want but you like in like you might get it from some other person but you do always get that help and as i said keep the motivation alive using uh, with the help of others it's basically now more so about the mental will well-being aspects so there are a lot of talks so music etc which would keep you motivated and um, there was this wonderful uh, linkedin post which i read uh, from uh, i forgot their names i think uh, uh, there is this three group of people who are doing phenomenal work in the field of education who are uh, phd's from mit uh, etc i don't remember well but uh, raj dandekar abhijit dandekar and one more uh, person uh, one of them had uh, written uh, about you know this self rejection bias when you come across any opportunity please don't self reject don't doubt yourself whether uh, you would be able to get it or not just give it a shot okay like very of like you know very often it's you who reject yourself by not applying okay so just try it give it a shot and uh, just think of yourself as deserving again I, i did doubt myself a lot but now one year down the line like kind of nine months down the line uh it i would say that like if i am selected i was deserving so if i had not applied during that time i wouldn't be making this video right now so please stay motivated and the second tip i would give is that don't keep uh, anything for the last moment as you rightly see the essays are heavy okay uh, and there is a lot of paperwork involved so do do the paperwork before hand now just two weeks uh, 15 days to 16 days are remaining please do the paperwork before hand uh, including getting your lors your noc uh, uh, etc uh, attested uh, mark sheet uh, etc and write your uh, essays and when you are writing your essays one important tip is that don't try to make it perfect in the first go i would have like i am telling you i have at least 7 to 8 uh, uh, revisions of my essays a lot of those revisions were because i had to <laughs> get down the uh, word count because i write a lot when i write but again just start writing write whatever you uh, feel like uh, writing and uh, you would uh, be able to right it is what my suggestions would be all right going back sorry uh so yes this was statement of purpose and the next question is about summary of past research and training so this is a very self explanatory uh, uh question again past lab research training technical background relevant internships or course work familiarity with tools techniques blah 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 so i did mention like again i had a lot to write in this so i did mention i again started from my school days uh, mentioning about my um, google science fair where i didn't get selected but that motivated me to read about research to learn research and then i seek that mentorship basically told again i don't want to tell my story here because in that's very personal but i did mention about all my experiences so uh, uh i wrote about my uh, five uh, i just in fact my publications five publications so uh, in the uh, uh, i just wrote that there are five publications and uh, multiple uh, completed and yet to be published uh, uh, research and their fields i had a lot to write so i couldn't even afford you know citing those uh, researches because the citation do take up lot of word count so what i did was i did mention because i had a lot to write i did mention my uh, I, that i have five publications and then i uh, 
attach them as uh, additional documents so and then i have mentioned about my course uh, important courses i did not mention about all but i told that you know i've been learning i told about them i told about my symposium thing or i told about how i started with orthopedics although now orthopedics is not my uh, field of interest but you know interest change right so that is fine to uh, have your interest you know to change your interests but now like or in fact i would say that orthopedics was more like my gateway to research where i got a wonderful wonderful mentor and a friend who uh, guided me to do research with and he's a orthopedics person so i uh, learned a lot from him and initial publications are orthopedics but again it's and uh, orthopedics is a huge field where you can do uh, uh, innovation where innovation is done so i mentioned about that i mentioned about my exchange program my inter lab internship under dr geeta ma'am and the department of biotechnology and how i researched for the opportunities i mentioned about how uh, uh, how i tried to seek some opportunities but, but wasn't able to get those due to xyz reasons so if i am telling so much like imagine i had a lot to say but the word count of 500 uh, words does not do justice but i fit it in in uh, certain ways so and ended it on a positive note that i am eager to learn this through this opportunity or which uh, hence i am seeking out this opportunity and all of that so again i am not going to share the exact uh, word but this is some tips i could uh, give it to you all okay so how much detail should you write about your past research topic so it's completely your choice as no like you do you Sh should it about be purely tech should it purely be technical about training or you can write what led again it is completely your choice what led you can either write in your personal statement or here also i did mix and match uh, a lot of it basically because i made it sound like a like i made it like a story as i'm repetitively saying now how much detail to write it's see i would have loved to write in details but it's just 5000 plus 500 plus 500 word limit which is really not enough for me and uh, saloni would laugh on me for saying this because she's always been my go to person for uh, like you know uh, uh, she is the editing expert but for this i did uh, edit on my own uh, uh, however like i i struggle a lot with uh, writing within the word count but it is and this is also what i learned uh, during my research uh, uh, fellowship or internship at johns hopkins we need to learn to be i not we i'll be very specific i need to learn to be succinct to be uh, in the story when i say story it should have a directionality and that's for any research paper or manuscript writing as well right it should have a directionality which i did but uh, being succinct and putting uh, your point across effectively using limited words is what i uh, will suggest uh, like which i need to learn and which even i will suggest you all to do uh so a person also asked me uh, like on whatsapp i forgot to add this here that whether i sh you should be uh, uh, attaching a separate document uh, uh mentioning your uh, personal statement or something like that personally i would strongly recommend against it because that just shows that you are not able to put your point across in limited number of words uh so you're not able to be succinct you're not able to be precise you're not able to be straightforward so i would strongly advise against uh, adding the personal statement uh, continuation in the additional documents uh, or uh, something like that so please avoid that so what should we write in the summary i mean see firstly please please this uh session which i'm doing is to help people out uh, with the application and to make their application better uh but i would also urge you all to look out for information this is a very 
I don't know, baked out because it literally says that, that you have to include all of, you know, all of these, right? So, what should we write in the summit? I don't understand this question. So, yeah, but like, you are also saying that you're working remotely, you have published three PubMed index systematic review papers. So, sh I mean, of course, right? That's what the question is asking. So, yeah. Uh, then, as an MBBS student, how do uh, at par with those studying in IITs, ISORs, where research is what they indulge in most of the time? Uh, I'll say do research. I mean, firstly, I will say that you shouldn't. Uh, this is a you. Uh, this is a, one of the uh, big questions which I have been getting, especially from first and second year students. That. Uh, uh, how do you we get uh, app application good for this application good for that application and so on but I'm a strong believer that you shouldn't be doing something in your life especially just because you want uh, you know this application of what you should do is should align with your interest should align with your uh, as I rightly said uh, a while back Oh, it should align with your interest. It should align with your short term and long term goals. It should not. Uh, oh, it should not be just for the sake of it that you know it would add on to your CV. Nothing should be a CV building exercise. It should be a self developmental exercise. So, uh, rightly in the words of uh, Shruti, who who has you know like she uses she. Uh, always uh, helps me out to gain this focus and uh, god bless her for that uh, but, yeah, like, but this is my personal belief that uh, you should be doing stuff for your own interest and not just for the sake of cv building and uh, it should not be a cv building gimmick if i would uh, use that strong word all right so do it for actual learning do it for actual uh, connections see uh, for example I, uh, if you see the, this very channel i have done uh, sessions on financial uh, uh, you know financial planning uh, and all of uh, then i did uh, like you know uh, using of course all of this using invited speakers uh, using uh, uk or plab uh, there were some sessions about uh, uh oh uh, sorry about uh, uh the second year postings a lot of it has been in inspired from my own journey like i did this session on us uh, residency i was not able to up uh, upload that one uk residency i did upload because i i was a, there was a time when i was really confused about my uh, life choices and what do i want to do in the future Financial also, uh, I do understand a huge, huge importance for that. The, uh, uh, introduction to clinical posting session was done because a lot of, you know, uh, when I began my postings in my second year, I was, and uh, most of my bachelors were confused on what to do, what is the right thing to do in the postings. And a lot of times when, by the time we understand what exactly do in, to do in postings, you, including small things like, how to go to OT, where do we change, like, you know, we shouldn't cross the red line with our uh, outside boots, then there is the surgical, uh, what do you say, sterile uh, area in the OT, and a lot of it, and like, how to take cases, which cases to take, uh, how to talk to patients, a lot of things we do not know, and we, it is very essential to, uh, and like, uh, family visits and all of that, so, I understood important and hence I took this and a lot of things which I do in fact are like because of my interest even like people are asking me like you know how to do this internship uh, 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 like what internship to do for the Khurana what lab experience should I have firstly your lab experience should not be for the uh, program application your program application should be strengthened by your uh, pre-existing lab experience which in turn should be motivated by your interests for me basic sciences preclinical uh, uh, pre uh, pre uh, sciences uh, paraclinical sciences laboratory sciences 
public health rehabilitative sciences this hold a lot of importance for me i give them a lot of importance and i try to seek those in various aspects for example uh, paraclinical i try to uh, i really i always want to i'm thinking of like also work like you know my long term goals also include uh, you know laboratory research or laboratory or clinical work like you know clinically related laboratory work as well for example if it comes to infertility or uh, a lot of embryology etc is lab right uh, so that's what i had uh, planned uh, so not planned that's what i uh, look up to in my long term uh, goal so i wanted this uh, lab experience so which uh, approached uh, uh, my uh, microbiology department of uh, uh, professors for and geeta ma'am and chai ma'am and the whole department as i said earlier was very supportive and learned learned so much so much i it was really um, experience which i remember when i say lab internship i'm talking about which i did on a personal level and of course that subsequently a couple of months later helped in my uh, application so i think everything works out for good okay uh, then um, uh, coming back to the question you have to find your own opportunities if you are you know it is uh, i saw kids do it let them do it you also find an opportunities again do not hesitate in seeking out for opportunities if if your college is not doing seek out external collaborations uh, there is a lot of research which you could do on uh, remotely so try reaching out do some courses again uh, a lot of courses uh, i don't like when people uh, again i am no one to comment on that but uh, a lot of people uh, uh, boast about their courses but uh, a lot of times th these courses are about your self development it is not a cv building exercise to you know publicize so uh, do courses only when you are sure that you will learn from it not just for the uh, sake for it sake of it and uh, yeah that's what i would suggest uh, for this question i hope i am i've answered your question uh, properly and in fact there are a lot of uh, opportunities when it comes to uh, icmr sta like for uh, this is more specific for medical students uh, this question in fact right so uh, there is icmr sta there is iisc bangalore or uh, internship there is one pune internship there are so many internships uh, uh, short term like you know one weekend or uh, two weekend internships there is the dips program which happens at jipmer pondicherry every year uh, 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 by department of uh, uh, science and technology of government of india dst and uh, welcome trust if i'm not if i'm not messing up the name so this is a good opportunity so try approaching those and i uh, believe that it would be a journey like you know it would be a fruitful journey and my journey also has been long and i just there's so much i have to learn still and i look forward to that what are some key experiences initiatives that can boost and again i would avoid uh, answering the first part of this question because i am strongly against doing uh, something for the sake of something rather you should uh, uh, basically you should do something because of your interest as i told and uh, the fruits or the benefits should come naturally with it okay and what experience did i highlight i have answered that already then i have only two past research experiences and two others are ongoing also those two past those past two are yet not published so should i mention all in my past research experiences or again it depends on what how much quantity you have if you want to see for somebody who does not have any publications writing or oh, sorry oh, mentioning that or oh, mentioning your research oh, or lab experiences itself is enough oh, oh, and basically the researches you worked on as research uh, assistant but did not get publications but got acknowledgments or if you basically for everything you mentioned you should have some or the other proof at least to prove that uh, you have uh, done that 
but you can definitely uh, write those uh, experiences uh, you know if you have uh, ongoing you can write uh, those but what i would suggest is like why you are doing those you can mention it either in at least in one of the answers so basically i did have a lot of things to write so i was not able to uh, i did not mention uh, how many are ongoing or how many uh, yet to pub you know completed but yet to be published so uh, if if this is all you have uh, do mention that in fact do mention on what those experiences on working on those two researches would bring that you know what brought for you okay then should i mention my failure of not getting selected in icmr first time but second time selected your choice totally like if that's your journey that if that's your story don't like it's your choice whether to include that in your research or not so also my subjects keep kept changing time to time initially interested uh, uh, in research in general so i took uh, projects under the guide or who i knew would be more helpful so initially it was pediatrics then uh, pathology for icmr although later I realized that i am not uh, interested in this session but uh, never uh, did the study after icmr rejection now interested in plastic surgery should i address this research interest so uh, even as i told even my re research has uh, journey has been you know different like i started my research with orthopedics although do no, i do not have a research interest or like career interest in fact in orthopedics except for you know the interdisciplinary uh, approach i do not have uh, interest per se uh, to uh, in orthopedics or psychiatry i do i have an interest so i i mostly my current research is i keep on doing mostly focused on obgyn and interdisciplinary collaboration with other fields like neurology when it comes to preeclampsia forensic medicine when it comes to maternal morbidity most of maternal, maternal mortality or uh, uh, sexual assault or domestic violence etc or uh, uh, psychiatry like uh, postpartum depression postnatal depression or perinatal depression or cardiology like peripartum ca cardiomyopathy uh, etc so i do that but like basically what i'm trying to say is it's okay to change fields and again whether you should address this uh, or in uh, in your essays it's completely your choice you have to decide what you want to uh, include in your uh, uh, in your essays i'm no one to comment on that and then i have struggled uh, initially the next question by the same person is i have uh, struggled initially for approaching to faculties whether research exposure as a college to get research exposure as our institute was newly open and few faculties we had uh, were all busy with establishing the college so most of the times they straightforward said they do not have time and few of them who said yes could barely take time for the project this literally made me disinterested and as far as the, what i learned from it is that research can be tiring especially if you don't have enough resources so should i mention that somewhere in your opinion and if yes where how can i mold it in my application for the best so if, again whether to include or not it's your choice but i you know your questions do sound very profound and if if i were in your place and if i had uh, you know the word count uh, available to me i would uh, mention this journey in research of mine uh, like i mentioned uh, my uh, uh, you know uh, i did mention my uh, google science fair uh, from my school days right so that's what that was my uh, uh, that was my initiating thing for uh, kurana uh, I did not get uh, selected to. Uh, I I got uh, selected to Homi Baba. Uh, there's this uh, exam called as Homi Baba, which is given in Mumbai at least. I'm not sure how far the reach is, but uh, the stage three of the same is interview uh, along with a project. So I did not go beyond stage two, but uh, that was one of the research experiences which people could write on. You can write about your journey. There's no harm in writing that. How and in fact whether to write is completely your choice uh, but if i were you i would mention it and probably uh, in 
either statement of purpose or in um, actually you could write in either of the three i would have uh, but essentially this this these two questions so uh, i would probably write in the past experience but very briefly you, like this query question itself is pretty big uh, you, i would like be more succinct with it is what i said and i will probably try to use better english uh, uh, such application and this is a, 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 a general uh, suggestion that uh, please be good with your vocabulary and grammar when it uh, when writing your essays do proofread them uh, 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 and do not i again heavily uh, uh, like please 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 uh, whoa, two suggestions one is please 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 get it proofread yourself read it thousand times before submitting if you have the time and that's why i'm saying like uh, write start writing uh, and uh, finalizing it uh, much before the deadline and also from others get it reviewed uh, proofread etc and also the second suggestion is like i'm strictly strictly suggesting against using you no know, your uh, uh, a chat gpt etc you should write your own story you should not need chat gpt etc and your chat gpt answers would definitely be called because uh, i'm not sure whether they use a screening tool but uh, what i would say is that at least i am able to identify chat gpt uh, at least gpt 3.5 uh, responses so uh, pretty they are pretty uh, typical in their writing format so it under it uh, so the human touch is definitely not there unless you are very good at using it uh, uh, and like you know prompting it well so i don't use it uh, that frequently so uh, basically but i would personally suggest no uh, chat gpt or other such uh, 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 large uh, llm models so yeah that's what i'll suggest so next thing is your application portal uh, so the next thing uh, in the application portal is your references that is you need two profess two people who would recommend you or who would be a reference okay so uh, you give their references so um, the as again it's rightly said here that uh, one should be your teacher or an instructor and the other should be uh, some uh, uh, a reference or lab supervisor or uh, Was under whom you have completed a training or internship. Uh, the references should be provided on official letterhead. Uh, so I prov. Uh, I don't have a lot of insights on that, but yeah, you have to fill in all these details. Okay, as I said, who can provide an assessment for the su su suitability for the internship? So basically, they will give you uh, LORs, and you have to upload those. and uh, they will attest for your capabilities basically the point of it and uh, so candidates are required to submit two letter of recommendations or references one from the teacher to tutor and another from a lab uh, uh, training or internship or um, uh, mentor or supervisor uh, this references should be provided on official letterhead of referees with their ink signature and stamp that is online uh, signature is not okay and uh, basically they should be ink it should, like you should uh, print and sign and scan that okay and uh, the letter head should be either uh, when it comes to medical students so it could be either the letter head of the institution or of the department or of the individual faculty a lot of the departments might not have their own individual departmental letter head for say like you know a proper made uh, properly made letter head for example microbiology has uh, but other departments not might or uh, medicine has but other departments some department don't have so in this case so uh, you uh, the mentor could write on their own private uh, letter head as well basically mentioning their name their contact details their credentials and contact information basically email and phone number and uh, the credentials and designation and affiliation and the name of course so this is a uh, and uh, below they should uh, 
sign and stamp if they have usually in medical colleges if you're asking a professor they would have a stamp if not with their name but at least of the designation like professor associate professor something like that they would definitely have a stamp uh or at least a departmental stamp they would have so either of it works so these are the guidelines which are given in the faqs itself but still people are asking uh, certain doubts which is kind of uh, sad that it it shows that you haven't uh, done your homework well so please do your home homework by yourself okay uh before uh but still i have i'm answering this for you okay at uh, uh so this letter of recommendations uh can be you can upload them with your application itself as you can see uh so not uh, not your as you can see first recommendation letter and second uh, recommendation letter if you have uh, like you know you have to select yes and select the file if it's uh, uh if the other option is uh, that your uh, if your mentor wants to give it confidentially without uh, sending it to you uh you can uh, they sorry they can send it to, directly email it to scholar at uh, iustf.org uh, with the candidate's name institute university clearly mentioned the subject line well before the submission deadline so uh, that is what it is so queries is whom did i approach and why i mean or did you suggest some points to write uh, or edit them in some way uh, i did uh, i approached uh, geeta ma'am uh, and padmaja samant ma'am geeta ma'am for the lab uh, uh, mentor one and padmaja ma'am for the research and clinical uh, experience one uh, basically the other one uh, and they are and i have told who they are in uh, the previous uh, discussion uh, and they wrote a letter for me why did i even uh, go to them because kita ma'am because she's a very nice person and she uh, mentored me immensely at the department helped me a lot uh, immensely when i did uh, the lab internship uh, and training so for the lab mentorship i would of course go to uh, her only right and for the clinical so for the other one uh, uh, for the research experience one uh, i went to padmaja ma'am because uh, uh, she again she uh, she is uh, of course a professor in the field of my interest that is one important thing and she is uh, my rapport with her is very good she is a very sweet kind and nice person uh, and yeah like both of them agreed to give me lowers like that's why <laughs> they were my referees right the like so they were my references uh, so they were my recommenders for the for that reason so that's why i uh, approached them similarly i have other rep recommenders uh, in uh, other fields of my uh, you know choice so basically one public health uh, recommender or, or reference i have and one basic science men mentor uh, recommender reference i have so you have to approach on three things so your field of interest your rapport with the pro, who you you would have rapport with uh, and requirements okay and what did you suggest some points uh, so basically i did mention uh, uh, like you know i requested them to, and that is very valid to do even in the residency applications uh, of uh, in the U, uh, pg you are allowed to for like although it's their choice what they want uh, your uh, to include in your letter but you can request them to include certain points uh, like uh, for example uh, uh, I could ask Padmaja ma'am to focus on my dedication, uh, clinical, and research experience uh, uh, because I have uh, done postings under her, and you know I have uh, gone over time to learn a lot, dedicatedly, and all of that. So that's what I suggested. Do the two references? Do we have this? Do we submit have to be at the same professor we are, are writing all, all over? Of course, that's the point of it. Uh, do you think your references were contacted um i don't know i really don't know i never asked them uh so i genuinely don't know uh, a little bit more insight on what to write in the reference section can you mention the reference of any one teacher 
both the references are compulsory so like lors the references are the people uh, two, two professors or mentors giving you the lor okay so i don't understand this question actually so but you have to give two two is compulsory uh, you can't give just one and uh, what's the use of them from whom should we get them uh i would request you uh, for this question i would genuinely request you to i did mention that uh, briefly that like letter of recommendations are uh, from your mentor your guide from your uh, uh, advisor from a professor any one of them who could attest for your skills for any application or for any position all right they could write and tell you like you know these are his or her or their qualities uh, they are uh, they are good at this uh, they have you know basically uh, again and more than of is basically they're attesting to it basically they are taking the full responsibility of whatever they are writing in the letter of recommendation for you so basically they are taking the responsibility for you so they are attesting for your skills and both your soft skills and your professional skills uh, or clinical skills your like your statistical or research skills everything when it comes to this uh, whatever is being mentioned they are attesting to it so like that's what is done like uh, what the use of them like you know you might it's basically the idea is like you might write anything uh, by yourself when somebody else uh, recommends you it's more like they are attesting for your skills so i would recommend you to read uh, like please take some efforts to google what are like letters of recommendation uh, and what's the use of them this is not our question to be asked here from whom should we get them uh, it's also clearly written so i'm moving on to the next so what all comes in the lab training or internship which we have to write about and get to lor similar question being do we need to have one of the lors from a lab training as uh, um so and uh, is previous lab experience necessary to apply do i specifically need to have lab experience lab research done as they ask and a teacher for the same although i have done some clinical case presentations certain conferences i have uh, have a good co curriculum background but i don't have any lab research background so uh, from my understanding again please don't take my uh, wo words verbatim uh, if you have any doubts uh, it's best to refer to the faqs yourself and if not still clear to email the uh, program coordinators or like scholar at the rate iusstf.org uh, and ask your this doubt because that this is doubt about eligibility uh, but to my understanding yes so one uh, some sort of lab training or internship is required because they ask one lor to be uh, so nobody can give you an lor uh, without you having uh, done the lab training or internship right so i think yes it is necessary to apply and clinical case presentation certain conferences and co curriculum uh, background that is not related to your lab uh, experience right so basically you're going there to the us if selected to do a, a lab uh, internship in basic sciences or uh, uh, translational research right so your uh, you should uh, you should probably does this uh, is coming probably from that uh, you should probably have some um, uh, experience in that because this is a very very competitive uh, scholarship so it might be uh, wise to give that a uh, you know uh, it might be uh, necessary like from my understanding uh, so uh, but also the fact being it no it need not be lab research necessarily for example mine was a lab training or internship where i learned the lab techniques and similarly your uh, lab experience could be a lab training or internship where you learn the skills or work or to do some things so in research you could analyze or you could analyze uh, for example microbiology i learned a lot of things i prepared smears i prepared uh, culture uh, cultures so antibiotic uh, antimicrobial uh, sensitivity uh, or resistance uh, 
testing uh your I, there's a whole reel i made about it so like again like rapid tests the molecular biology using pcr then cbnat and mgt cultures for tb and uh, so mycology or uh, stay uh, staining uh, etc parasitology or uh, stool microscopy etc so that's what i learned effectively so that was a learning plus training uh, uh, sorry training plus uh, internship uh, experience so similarly so when it comes to medical students what you can do is um, options of some short-term lab work before answering this i would again say that it, your lab experience should not be for the purpose of corona uh, application your corona application should stem from uh, you know should be benefited from your pre-existing lab research which should in turn be based on your interests okay but to give you to answer your question uh, it could be uh, uh, your uh, biochemistry laboratory it could be a pathology or laboratory and in a pathology laboratory there's so much right it could uh, in, even in fact uh, your uh, biochemistry laboratory it could be your chemicals or it could be your pcr uh, as well your uh, molecular biology or genetics not uh, infectious one but uh, uh, your the role of genetics and diseases uh, that kind of PCR etc uh, you could do in pathology and it could be you could do in various divisions of uh, pathology for example if I'm not wrong my college has surgical pathology cytopathology uh, neuropathology and histopathology of course uh, and uh, and your uh, hematology uh, i guess that's uh, that's all yeah so a uh, clinical uh, pathology as well so that's uh, all uh, the, and you might have more options in your specific uh, uh, pathology lab also you might have options of immunohistochemistry uh, immunohistochemistry uh, and molecular markers and staining is uh, uh, fluorescent uh, staining uh, 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 fish and uh, etc so you might want to look into your own institution so i spoke about biochemistry pathology my college also has a, a, a clinical pharmacology lab uh, which does work in uh, 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 they do uh, the labs uh, there are therapeutic drug monitoring lab and pharmacogenetics and pharmacogenomics laboratory so that could be uh, one field if you have clinical pharmacology or a pharmacology department might be doing this so if you don't have a clinical pharmacology lab in addition your pharmacology uh, 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 department might have animal labs and uh, uh, neuro uh, labs etc and uh, your physiology uh, labs would have uh, might have a uh, human experimental uh, you know uh, human experimental uh, laboratory uh, and hematology laboratory where you would basically you need to develop uh, instrument you know skills uh, lab skills where you know which could be shared so these are some uh, avenues which medical students can uh, uh, explore i'll say and uh, oh yeah so that is uh, about uh, the lab training uh, uh, if no would a research wouldn't allow from research faculty would be good uh, i don't think so personal opinion uh, again you should be checking out checking that out yourself okay next question uh, so next is your uh, uh what well, they have given as i showed uh, as i have shown you all in a previous uh, slide they have given the format of the uh, parent institution noc then supporting documentation you have to uh, attach either a transcript or latest mark sheet so you can attach uh, the attested mark sheet uh, or the official printed mark sheet and uh, upload it to the two recommendation letters if you uh, have uh, if they have given to you directly or they can email and choose accordingly the noc have to include scan copy of first uh, and last page of passport if you have selected apply for passport uh, this uh, uh, won't appear so 
uh, and any other additional documents so it's your choice for example i did a uh, give proofs of everything i mentioned in my past experiences i did a compile it in a single pdf for basically my publications etc and i did a submit that one important thing is to keep saving your application don't forget to keep saving your application uh, this is very very important uh, especially when uh, you have uh, you know written the essays firstly first and foremost i don't even uh, uh, i i basically uh, sorry i'm stammering again but uh, i i highly recommend you all not to type directly in the uh, you know essay fills which is given write it separately in your word file and keep on in fact uh, making new new versions of it uh, no, so that you have a track of all versions so in, in case you want to refer to a, a earlier revision version um, of it and then uh, you uh, copy paste it a little uh, editing here and there you can do okay uh, and once uh, but keep on saving that and once you do that but because but still uh, you might lose some progress so i'm not sure but yeah please do uh, save it uh, after repetitive uh, intervals and once you submit they will ask you for a confirmation and uh, once you submit you will uh, get to download uh, uh, the whole application package whatever you have entered uh, you can uh, download it as a pdf so uh, you so for your for your record so the uh, the first question i did answer i didn't do not have any publications my college do not won't approve for noc how should i go about this uh, totally it's see as I said I have answered this also before it's your convincing powers and so on but if your college doesn't uh, easily approve uh, sorry but that's your lookout the suggestions on what how to do like ex uh, how, how to explain to them of how big opportunity this is how it matters to you and your development and so on uh, it's your uh, like this is what I would suggest could you share about forms, visa, etc., etc.? Uh, I have answered this before, I guess. Visa, I'll uh, share in a later one. Uh, as I said, finances, uh, I, they give some uh, benefits. They don't give so, some hostel. Don't call it hostel in, in the first place. Accommodation and food and living expenses in general, I uh, you know, you have to manage on your own. From a stipend i cooked on my own i shop i did grocery shopping on my own again nothing big bare minimum but yeah you again the thing is it's us uh you get uh be please be careful about your exp uh, expenses uh, uh because uh the conversion rate is high right so it might not be uh, affordable if uh your uh, expenses are beyond the uh, stipend uh, you might getting i forgot to also mention that some of my friends also did get an additional stipend from their host uh, institute as well like they, they uh, some of them got accommodation uh, which i told some of the, of some of them got waivers some of them in addition to all of this also got additional stipend from their host institute but uh, probably not medical students because uh, sadly uh, health uh, like you know pure like clinical research, not clinical research, but uh, I don't know. Fund there are some discrep uh, disparities in funding, probably uh, if I'm not wrong. But again, not not the scope of this uh, sec uh, session. But yeah, some of my uh, co scholars did get uh, stipends from their uh, uh, mentor, like U.S. Uh, host university mentor as well. Additionally, uh, the point here being, uh, please be uh, stringent on your uh, about your uh, sorry about your expenses, and that's what I would suggest you. Then selection criteria. So a lot of people have been asking me, what are the criteria? How to uh, like what we should we focus on, etc., etc. So the cl selection criteria was clearly, clearly given in the FAQ. So the eligible applications are further reviewed by subject experts. There's a panel uh, wherein they see your academic background and credentials, research interests, possible uh, project areas and career goals, research experience, technical background, other internships, lab, courses, lab work, proposed project ideas, 
need to conduct research in the US and any uh, publications or poster presentations, if any. So basically your entire application is worth it. So please don't ignore any part of the application. So selections are purely on the basis of merit, uh, no cast or econo economic considerations. Uh, uh, but, but, and also no interviews will be conducted. So some related uh, queries are, uh, first, I'll, uh, first I will address this, some similar type of queries that I, uh, people are asking, I have this experience, I have that experience, so whether I'll get selected on this, blah, blah, blah. First of all, as I said, doesn't harm trying. Secondly, I am just a previous scholar and i'm i was not there in the judges panel and there is no way to know exactly which parts of the they told they have given some selection criteria right uh but some part of the uh, like, uh, like which part of the application pro uh pro, which part of the application uh, they give more importance to uh and which do they give less importance to is no but there's no way to know uh, somebody was asking me, I have just 69% uh, or something uh, uh, in uh, in my previous exams. So will I get the, uh, 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 is it sensible to apply? I, was like, I don't know. Okay, you have to decide like, you know, on your own and it never harms in trying. Full disclosure, I had 69.11% uh, in my, uh, uh, second year that is the that is that was my percent latest percentage when i applied right uh but i still got to select like basically it was it was about the eligibility criteria but they, they are not phenomenal marks in my opinion so but still i got selected right so it's it's always see the selection is a subjective process right um what points in fact might be uh, given more importance last year might not uh, be the same uh, in the coming uh, cycle uh, uh, cycle and uh, because the judges panel might get uh, you know or might be different uh, every year and so on so uh, these doubts are really not no doubts to you know these are not queries to be asked because nobody would know that so uh, whether you want to apply this year or next year or whether you have a chance at selecting uh, you need to decide on your own for that okay and hi i am a final year student from uh, rgmc Kurva, and i had applied for Khurana last year but didn't get selected i'm applying again this year what is the selection uh, committee looking for in the application does preference list of mentors play a role in the selection uh, so selection committee looking for in the application it's written the selection criteria is written uh but again what uh is uh, important i'm not sure uh so does but for one thing i would like suggest to those who do not have you know for example they say a lot of people have said that uh 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 i have zero to no uh, little to no experience etc etc whatever you have just mentioned it and how it helped you in your self-development uh, and so on uh, just mention it uh, like you know and how it aligns to your long-term goals and uh, interests mention it like basically it's also a matter of how you present yourself right uh, it i'm sorry i use a word i use the word right all right quite frequently uh, i apologize for that but my point being here being is that do mention uh, uh everything if possible uh if you are above the word limit cut down put uh, the uh, put the experiences you consider the most important uh, from your understanding and if you have uh, if you're lesser you can then you can be more detailed and elaborate as one of the previous queries was asking and that's all i could say and uh does the preference list of mentor play a role uh, in the selection for example uh, i enter only ivy league colleges that show that does that show that i didn't uh, research my field of interest and just showed the top google searches 
Uh, again, I'm probably not the person to comment on this because I'm I have no way to know. But uh, I did mention only Stanford and Hopkins, but it was more about uh, because they were uh, aligning with my field of interest. So just from sample size of one, that is myself, I would say that it does not uh, hamper the chances of selection because my clearly it was they are not ivy league by definition but uh, they are like the top universities right uh, uh, stanford and hopkins both of them so i don't think it might be affecting uh, uh, it, largely uh, and i don't think there might be assumptions that you just google them uh, and uh, wrote the top searches uh, pro I think provided that uh, your list of mentors uh, aligns with what your research interests were, uh, then I think it should be working fine. And uh, as you said, you applied last year but didn't get one thing for such applications is uh, one few suggestions that pro probably try to improve, you know, try to... Uh, of course, I believe that y'all might have worked, uh, like, you know, y'all might have gained more experiences to talk about in the past year, past nine months. Secondly, uh, probably work on making your essays more succinct, more, uh, uh, like, basically better. Like, you know, they should be uh, good and they should talk about you. They should speak your story as have been say, repetitively saying. So probably make them better. And... Uh, I think actually those are everything which is uh, subjective and which you could improve. Other than that, objectively, uh, other, everything else is objective. Uh, if you are able to get better LORs, more personalized uh, LORs who could vouch for your skills in a better way, you could try that as well. And uh, I would uh, uh, probably uh, suggest you to, uh, I did, uh, like this person also had a shared uh, their CV and uh, uh, you can actually email me for uh, you know uh, a further discussion about that. Uh, now after uh, so okay you have you have uh, you have submitted the application and in two to three months after the reviewing extensively they let you know if you're selected or not of course so if you're select uh, selected it's more like it's your provisionally selected your final selection is uh uh your final selection is subject or is contingent to the uh fact or to the criteria that you should get a research position in the us they might help you a little but you have to find it out on your own okay uh, you do get some time to find it out there's no hurry but uh, in fact it was a lot of hurry for us because uh, our applications uh, deadlines were in january we got our application results by march uh, second week ish and then we look started looking for mentors my uh, application acceptance my uh, internship uh, acceptance was pretty quick i'll say so i did get that and i uh, and hence i did not uh, like i'll share my visa uh, uh, very soon in this slide itself uh, but but now since they are uh, closing the deadline started the deadlines in October itself uh, I think uh, it, you might get enough time uh, for application uh, so, like, you might uh, get enough time to look for research positions and all of that so okay that is again once you're provisionally you will get an email saying that you're provisionally selected and then for the process of match of placement etc starts once that's uh, so once you get uh, you have to look for mentor and institute and return paperwork from home institute like repeat permission from home institute if required so i prefer doing that because mine was like you know i had taken like i'm like this is for my application and applying now like once I was selected and once I actually got the Hopkins uh, position for sure, I uh, again applied to the universities. Uh, sorry, sorry. I again applied to, I again gave a permission, uh, requested uh, for uh, permission to miss this postings, uh, etc. 
and our exams were not scheduled date so i kind of uh, uh, took uh, uh, that time after the selection i took uh, in the same email i requested uh, about exams so uh, if exams happen to be uh, scheduled uh, during that time please give a consideration because our exam timetables were not out so soon the internal assessment exam timetables so i didn't mention that as well so basically i took a repeat permission because i like to do everything systematic and organized and hence i prefer taking a repeat permission and not going just randomly then detailed transcripts of uh, curriculum clusters so uh, so your co uh, for your research electives you might uh, have to uh, submit your academic transcripts so uh, what is included in your transcripts so uh, so every uh, trans every institution has its own format of uh, transcripts so uh, for kgm students for gsm students so uh, when you approach the ug office they have it uh, they have a format of their uh, own where they meant there is a two transcripts one is of ours and other is of uh, your marks our transcript uh, according to the new cbme curriculum they will give it uh, they did type for me and now it's uh, 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 they'll be using the same things for everyone uh, and uh, for the marks transcript uh, your posting and post marks will be uh, used uh, for your postings or uh, for your marks transcripts and uh, you also have to submit your uh, uh, previous exam uh, results your first year second year third year uh, so by the time I actually got the selection I, uh, I had already passed third year I, the results were out so i was able to give the uh, third year marks as well so uh, those will be uh, added as your first year second year third year marks for final year marks or end post marks so your co co clerkship marks are your um, marks which are entered in the transcripts immunization uh, again it depends uh, for university to university for medical schools usually the amc uh, standard uh, immunization form is used but it is always a uh, uh, suggested uh, that uh, this everything of this will be told by uh, like once you get an acceptance uh, uh, your uh, the academic coordinator sorry the administrative coordinator of your mentor will help you out with all of this stuff so but I'm just saying that a lot of paper like a paperwork some paperwork might be required and uh, uh, and some are like uh, your home college based also like repeat permission or curricular transcripts etc for Hopkins, I'll be speaking um, shortly. Visa, uh, visa was a huge problem in my Quran scholarship badge. For myself, uh, like once I got the acceptance, I just applied right away uh, to visa. Uh, again, what type of visa? J1 is a student visa, I guess. F no, F1 is a student uh, visa. J1 is an exchange visitor uh, visa. For which both of which you have to pay a service fees, whereas uh, 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 this is what uh, uh, the Quran program suggests because you know that is what the usual norm is, and uh, you also get expedited uh, interviews for those. Whereas uh, for medical students, you can do uh, uh, you can go even for research electives or such internships even on a B1 B2 visa. The uh, advantage of a B1 B2 visa is that. Uh, uh, you do not have to do a uh, to your uh, home country or uh, res you know stay after you complete your uh, uh, J1 F1 period. So that's one advantage. But which uh, visa you have to take is dependent on your institute. Uh, so I was actually under the impression that I'll also have to go with the J1 or F1, uh, uh, which is in fact more costly as well because uh, you also have you have to pay the ds160 uh, i don't remember uh, uh, the n numbers but uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, fill the ds160 as well and ds uh, uh, one specific for uh, uh, j1 and f1 also i2 or something i don't but basically you have to pay savings fees as well they are additional fees again this is not a concern of now but it is more costly also but which uh, uh, whether your uh, institute is uh, sponsoring j1 or f1 uh, or whether uh, uh, you have to go on b1 you're allowed to come on b1 b2 is uh, based on what your 
host institute that is your university in the us will tell you i was under the impression that i will go with j1 f1 because uh, uh you know uh, and i was happy with that because uh, you will also get expedited uh, appointments for that and if you if you know the general appointments for b1 b2 the wait list is up to one year or two year one and a half years etc so it's tough so when i uh, but hopkins specifically told me that i would have to come on b1 b2 visa and also the, uh, so it was a kind of uh, mentally uh, like you know it was uh, I was very scared and confused, but that turned out in better way because uh, uh, they do it give uh, why they want uh, like the, a letter to the uh, international embassy uh, about why uh, it's B1, B2 for medical students. So uh, there's a clause under uh, the visa thingy uh, about uh, medical students coming for electives uh, and they are allowed on B1, B2. And also, uh, and so I applied for an expedited appointment, uh, and my request was uh, approved. To, uh, you know, to to get an expedited appointment, and I think uh, that was uh, usually uh, owing to the uh, letterhead of acceptance on the letterhead of Hopkins using the contact and the contact information. Uh, uh, because it's a huge university again, and again, blessed about that. Uh, secondly, uh, the letter from IUSSTF that they are funding and it is ultimately a government program, right? So that and uh, uh, also from WinStep uh, Forward, who are the uh, coordinators in the US requesting uh, the embassies uh, for, you know, uh, that, you know, the program is starting very soon, please do that. And basically, ultimately, even if you, uh, uh, like, your Korana program, people do help out in that. Uh, many people had to start late. Thankfully, mine started on time, and in fact, I was able to go one week early for a cog. Uh, uh, and that's how to, that's what I, I'll say. Like visa, you'll have to do all of, and shopping and packing, of course, and then go to your internship. So yeah, this was all about uh, the Corona program and how to apply. Uh, so just to share a little experience about Corona program, excluding Hopkins because uh, a lot of people uh, were asking uh, me about this so i'll say that it is a very prestigious scholarship and it's a very rare it is very rare to get this scholarship and it's by government of india so getting it is cherry on the cake or whatever you call it icing on the i sorry i'm bad at phrases but yeah, basically, it, it it would if you're thinking in terms of CV. Although I have been speaking that you should not do for CV, but uh, even if you are thinking in terms of CV, it's usually immensely helpful, I'll say. And learning experiences, my God, they have like you know it's more so. I'll tell in Hopkins experiences more about it, but I was able to learn a lot. But it is also important that uh, you realize that it's not end of everything it's not make or break you have to take care of yourself uh uh i mean i was as i said mentally uh very viable during that time application time so please follow the uh, suggestions start early uh, writing your essays early get it reviewed have your mental uh, health support and all of that I thank all of my supporters, like again, Shruti, Tejas, Hojas, Rohan, and my professors for everything they have done for me. And secondly, support from IUSSTF, Minister Forward, and DBT, the Department of Biotechnology, is immense. Like when you are doing a fully funded scholar, when uh, uh, the government of India is giving you a fully funded scholarship, it is definitely going to be competitive. But once you get it, it is. It is remember that it is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity. At least it was for me. And the most important thing of this scholarship was the was that I met I, I got to know so many brilliant minds out there. So this like in my year that is the previous cycle, uh, seventy five scholars were selected. If uh, I if I'm not wrong. So, because there was two year gap, so three year, uh, every year they select 25. 
to my to the best of my knowledge so 25 into 3 they selected 75 so the conversations i've been having with them it they have been phenomenal and uh, i did get some very good friends in the cohort as well and uh, ishan and fatima and i would owe to Khurana program for giving me so good i would say close friends and who have been supportive and helpful and have been con having conversations and they're really good friends which have uh, if i which have uh, whom have met yeah so, um they do uh, is team wsf basically the is step uh, and uh, winstep also help in the post selection process uh, in some ways by emailing in terms of uh, visa in terms of uh, getting positions if at all if you're not able to match and all of that and uh, they help with the uh, uh, so ultimately it it is a scientific community which gets built right so that who you with with whom you can uh, discuss ideas with you can discuss some lot of things take help for your future uh, like a lot of uh, people are you know we discuss about phd opportunities and master's opportunities etc then uh, we, uh, like basically long term connections of a scientific community is what is and also uh, when it comes to actually going there for doing the Kurana internship we do uh, uh, it it helps to uh, you know to have this uh, because you know a lot of us are going to the us for the first time we don't know about the visa process about the us travel the immigration process so uh, the stay the expenses all the suggestions like small small jugards and suggestions all this helps in the you know um, on a larger view of it so i'm like uh, although uh, every year it is uh, there is something called as orientation program um, for for us it was uh, kept in the university at the university of chicago on 20th and 21st of may but sadly it was cancelled because of the delayed uh, uh results uh, due to unforeseen and un uh, avoidable circumstances uh, so people weren't able to all people weren't uh, starting the uh, scholarships or internships on uh, the uh, research internships or at the same time so it was not feasible to do such a meet but uh, as far as i understand doing such um, like this is a norm of everyone that they do uh, arrange for such orientation program and a meet or a symposium where you get to meet such brilliant scientific minds so i all in all i'll say that uh corona program has been a once in a lifetime opportunity for me but uh, uh and i would highly 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 recommend you all to apply and give it a try now that being said where did i do my internship so i did it in johns hopkins university school of medicine in the department of gynecology in like basically i did in the field of gynecology and obstetrics at uh, johns hopkins university yeah as i said in baltimore maryland uh, usa uh, my mentor was dr james seegers uh, who is a professor of gynecology and obstetrics and uh, reproductive uh, endocrinology and infertility and is a director of the division of the reproductive sciences and women's health research uh, division oh, sorry i think i repeated the word division um, that is the howard w and georgiana seager jones laboratory of reproductive science and women's health research All, i was also co-mentored uh, and immensely guided and uh, mentored by uh, dr bhuchitra singh uh, who is the director of clinical research at dr seager's lab that is at the division of reproductive uh, sciences and women women's health research the laboratory research focus and the research focus of my mentors of uh, has uh, is based uh, they do uh, all types of research that is basic sciences laboratory benchwork research trans uh, or the experimental research uh, translational research uh, basic science also including animal research or uh, translational research including uh, 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 including uh, uh, what do you say all types of linking there are various uh, types of translation stages of translational research 
Okay, so uh, uh, transnational research, clinical research, and public health research, everything uh, related to GYN, OB, um, especially um, endometriosis, fibroids, and uh, reproductive and ovarian disorders, and beyond as well. So I will first share my experience uh, at uh, Johns Hopkins. So my experience at Johns Hopkins is something which i could really not express in words but uh, I, it was once in a lifetime experience i would never it, it it has it has been a core memory now i met so many sweet people right from uh, starting from left to right is uh, dr seegers himself dr bhujitra singh himself uh hajra who was my co-rotator uh such a such a sweet uh, person and uh, now we are uh, in addition to Ishan and uh, uh, Fatima, who I met through Khurana, I would also say, like, at Johns Hopkins, uh, uh, Hajra is one of a very good friends who I met, and uh, is a very kind person, and I, she and Irene here, uh, in yellow, uh, Irene is a research, senior research nurse at Dr. Seeger's lab, and uh, both of them were my kind of support pillars uh, if i could call them um, like that uh, so and it was amazing and uh, uh, she's lily uh, one of my co-rotators she's also a very nice person um, and i loved uh, working with her and uh, uh, we are still working uh, on research to together and it has been a wonderful time uh, co trying to contribute to science uh, then um, he is Josh, uh, who is the lab manager of Dr. Seeger's lab, and then Gail, who is a postdoctoral researcher. I don't have a photo of certain others like Miriam, uh, who was a awesome, awesome uh, uh, administrative coordinator, and she helped a lot. Uh, you know, in a lot of things. In fact, uh, after Dr. Seeger's and Dr. Singh. Um, the first person, uh, like, uh, from the lab per se, who I, uh, you know, conversed with on uh, email was uh, Miriam, and she helped a lot with the application process, with guiding what to do, and so on. And even during my stay, she, uh, during my time at Hopkins, she did help a lot uh, with multiple things. And then there was Dana. There was. There were so many people like uh, there's sort of there's uh, so I mean like my lab mates were wonderful and I just kind of I miss them <laughs> I'll say and then uh, the learning experience and work environment was le learning and work environment was truly constructive truly uh, what this developmental truly nourishing is what if I had to say. Uh, so many skills I developed and used uh, during this uh, period. Uh, and I got to learn so much uh, from Dr. Seegers, uh, Dr. Singh, uh, from all of these people, from a lot of things. This, uh, as you can see, this is in front of the hospital. This is in front of the university in the Homewood campus. Um, this was my desk, uh, this was my um, office space, this is uh, in front of the Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital, like heritage building, the dome building, uh, they have different names, they call it different names, but yeah, and uh, again, I loved my time there. Uh, I worked on five uh, paper, uh, five to six papers, so I cannot reveal the topics of those, but uh, they were... Uh, very varied in terms of their study design and discipline and uh, a lot of inform uh, a lot of uh, importance was given to uh, interdisciplinary collaboration like we collaborated with mathemat uh, we had researchers uh, collaboratively with mathemat application of mathematics economics uh, public health law uh, informationists uh, pathology and all of that so it was awesome uh, working on that. The, all the lab mates, as I said, are, were very friendly and motivating. The mentors were inspiring and motivating at all times. And uh, 
they were appreciating where it was uh, uh, due it was like you know correcting where it was needed correcting the wrongs where it was needed and basically it was a very fruitful mentorship uh, uh, mentorship as in like a learning as a mentee it was a awesome learning experience uh, uh, i was also fortunate enough to see surgeries related to the research to observe and shadow in the surgeries uh, related to the research and uh, uh, a lot more experiences i'll again repeat that uh, it was once in a lifetime uh, experiences a major missing and uh, so one thing i i forgot to tell is that uh, well, this is for uh, students who are uh, who are ap prospective applicants or uh, of the corona pro program as well as the hopkins uh, research electives note that your projects your experience etc are dependent on the institute and the mentor or the lab all right so i was really really fortunate to have these amazing uh, mentors these amazing lab this amazing opportunity uh, so you might want to research a lot uh, about your as a, and uh, a few tips on that I have given uh, in the previous uh, slide so that was uh, about my experience at hopkins and again a major missing regarding my stay experience uh, basically outside hopkins i don't think that is the scope of the this uh, session so i won't talk on that so i would genuinely very briefly uh, uh, talk about how to apply for uh, hopkins research electives so where to find information and apply so this is the website name and this is the screenshot uh, even if you search on google uh, johns hopkins uh, medicine uh, research electives uh, you would uh, come across this information and trust me uh, so firstly to begin with what electives are available at uh, johns hopkins so there are clinical electives research electives and virtual electives so virtual electives i'm not sure uh, uh how the thing is right now it was heavily uh applicable during the covid uh, uh 19 pandemic surge clinical electives we uh uh, uh international students from india international medical students do not have uh, the option of doing clinical electives with hopkins so that is out of question so the only option available is research electives uh, for us uh, and that the application of the same is through the online portal of uh, Johns Hopkins. So when to apply? So applications are accepted, I think, all over the uh, all like you know the entire year. Uh, uh, but like you know, maximum uh, six months uh, prior. You can't uh, just apply one month prior to your planned date, and must be submitted at least at least six weeks prior. Means like you know. Or you can't uh, submit uh, if you want to go in uh, uh, mid May. You probably uh, should apply latest by I think first of April. Uh, so be careful about that. Again, the point here being you cannot apply directly yourself. As in, uh, you have to get an official uh, acceptance by reaching out to a mentor. Of uh, about which I'll talking uh, about in a few uh, slides. So duration of the research electives, official info says that it's typically scheduled for nine weeks, but I think uh, they may be variable as per the understanding and need uh, between student and mentor and the institute. For example, I have uh, uh, had uh, some friends there uh, who were for six weeks only. Some of them were for like uh, three months or so. So I'm not uh, really uh, sure about the whole, uh, like, but typically they're scheduled for nine weeks as per their uh, information. Cost is 500 for a research elective, which is paid before the start of the elective. That is, you do not have to pay any application fee. Only if, only if you're selected, if after you get your official uh, acceptance letter, uh, 
at least 10 days before you start or something like that uh, you have to uh, at, at, before your starting date you have to uh, pay the fees then how to apply uh, the entire information is given on the same page uh, as of what I show, show like if you go to this Johns Hopkins University uh, like visiting medical students page there will be a there will be a link uh, shown on how to apply so uh, which will redirect you to this uh, specific page and it will give you literally all 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 the information readily available with so many FAQs which will really answer all your doubts and the application process is super easy and all the answers are really uh, uh, like you know, uh, everything is self-explanatory and like Hopkins has done a very uh, good work of uh, making the process easier and it's clearly given there so technically this uh, hence I always ask even for Corona and for uh, Hopkins a lot of information is readily available on the internet it just takes uh, a little efforts to look for that information online uh, and when it's such a huge opportunity, it is worth it or it is essential that you do take some efforts from your end as well. Nonetheless, so uh, there are uh, this FAQs given. So what is an official transcript? I did speak about in the previous slide that it mentions about your uh, or your grades, your hours, etc. And um, uh, the format would be specific to your school, to your medical college. You cannot uh, fax or email your application. Uh, duration I spoke about. Uh, all this I will talk about. So how to apply uh, is for research electives. You have to go to this WizMed portal where you apply for uh, electives. Uh, this is the portal screenshot uh, where you create an account. Uh, like you, I did not explain how to create an account. Okay, and uh, strictly, uh, the applications are only through this online portal. You cannot uh, fax or email or send in hard copies of your uh, application. Okay, this pro uh, this portal has to be only used. So how to apply? Firstly, you do not uh, apply directly using the Wismed portal. Firstly, you have to reach out uh, to prospective mentors or uh, that is attending professors or faculty through fax or email. Preferably email here in India. We don't use fax nowadays, right? But yeah, uh, or you would uh, like email the professors who you would want to do a research elective with. Whom did I? How did I? Whom did I? I as I told, I have been always been inspired from the work of Dr. Seegers, and hence I emailed him uh, immediately after I got the pro I got provisionally selected for the uh, Corona scholarship. How I how did I, I emailed him because I I got his email from his uh, uh, corresponding author information. Uh, uh, but a lot of times, so uh, uh, this information is might be given on the websites of the universities. So uh, I'm talking for other universities. Hopkins does not hasn't given this information as far as I know. But the electives book uh, has. Uh, information on what all electives are available and uh, uh, of course we cannot do uh, clinical electives uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah you have to i will suggest you to read the electives book and the uh, research electives information is also given in that and some um, uh, some uh, email uh, or contact informations might be given in those and uh, yeah just uh, email uh, them and like uh, or if not if uh, not given that like try to find from the corresponding information uh, author information from the published papers then prospective mentor may reply acceptance rejection or for the rejection as in they, may, they might not have a lab or they might not have a uh what do you say space as rightly said in like how do we know for in one of the faqs it's written, how do we know whether we are selected on what uh, basis is it given so they have told it is uh, given on a rolling basis after uh, 
give giving a preference to their own uh, Hopkins students. So, uh, nonetheless, the prospective mentor may reply, there might be interviews or uh, quote unquote meetings, uh, etc. So for me, it was uh, uh, Dr. Singh replied to me on the behalf on behalf of Dr. Seegers, and then we had an interview where we spoke uh, about our interests, what they would need to do for the Kurana scholarship, etc. And uh, uh, around uh, four to five days later, uh, I got the acceptance email from uh, Miriam, that is the administrative coordinator, and uh, like of course on behalf of Do Dr. Seegers. And so you get an accept an email so if accepted, of course. And then once accepted, you have to apply on Wizmed. So you, what do you have to keep ready? Keep ready for the application is your personal details. Of course, you know the, your personal details, your mentor details, which your administrative. One thing important in all of this is your administrative coordinator of the lab will help you out in all of this, I believe. At least Miriam was a very Miriam is a very very nice person who helped me immensely through this. So, uh, huge cheers for her so, and gratitude to her. So, nonetheless, the documents you know uh, need is um, a letter of good standing from medical college, your CV or resume you should keep ready, academic transcripts, LOR, immunization question mark. I, uh, so the thing is that when I First, open my open the portal. Uh, the immunization. Uh, the there was no field of immunization. Uh, like uh, as I will show you uh, in the for the screenshots. However, when I got my uh, documents ready, uh, suddenly when I was applying, there was a field of immunization. Like you know to submit a immunization document using the AMC standard format, but I hadn't kept it ready and I had to rush for uh, and I was going to do that after my uh, application for Hopkins. Basically, I was doing it in a systematic, uh, you know, step by step manner so as to I have so that I have clarity into the process. But uh, suddenly the immunization uh, document uh, uploading uh, feature had come and it was compulsory. So. I had to rush around, take some, uh, like, you know, do some tests about those titers, IGRA, and all of that. So, and uh, and do some, uh, you know, booster uh, vaccinations like MR, uh, DTAP, and all of that. So, I had to do. And uh, you'll have to inform your professor or admin about the requirement of home school approval. I'll tell what that is. So, this is the portal when you open it, uh, and you will see this. And these are the, each of the, uh, sections of the application personal background uh, you might know i don't have a screenshot of, of that for some reason uh, basically these are the screenshots which are taken long back during my application or itself for my purpose so i don't have the latest screenshots so please uh, there might be changes if any so if you have to look for them then uh, medical school details so just type in your name if there is not uh, there click uh, you have to click there and I don't know what happens when you click there because my institute name was there thankfully and uh, year in program uh, program length you can put a six years because five and a half option is really not there or you can put five years actually five years so that you know it's like first year second year third year fourth year and uh, internship year you, it could be a fifth year and um, year in program of course you have to put in uh, accordingly program means your MBBS program so put in five years for MBBS students and anticipated graduation date. Date, uh, uh, I do not, I put in as, uh, as I explained the graduation should, uh, earlier I explained that graduation is always after your uh, intern, uh, MBBS internship. So, uh, so I put in May 25, but the date, I do not know. So like tentatively, uh, 31st of May is what we put always. So that is uh, something. So 31st May, uh, May 31st, 2025 is something I put for as I was a uh, 2019 batch student. Program details in the program you'll have to put research elective and elective. Uh, uh, once you start typing, um, uh, you uh, you have to you can refer to the electives book for the exact name. But you once you type for research elective or gynecology and obstetrics something like for me it was like that. So research elective in dash dash dash. Uh, then you will get a. Uh, it's kind of a drop-down list uh, which appears, which have to uh, 
add started and end date you have to put a preceptor or the mentor's name you have to put so as i said you have to own, you have only one option of putting uh, the mentor's date it is not like other applications at other electives if uh, usml aspirants know about it so so that's what you have to get your confirmation of acceptance beforehand user through contacting them um, uh, for and asking them getting the confirmation only then you have to put in and started or and ended is also on a pre-decided or uh, mutually understood uh, dates you have to put but again having the email confirmation also does not mean that you have finally selected that is you have to that is a provisional acceptance uh, kind of your if i would have to name it like that and once you confirm the position from the uh, mentor the official documentation uh, is on uh, the wismet portal the formalities emergency contact again um, put in um, i think i put off my parents then supporting materials letter of good standing i told about so what does the letter of good standing entail it's basically you have to mention that uh, you are a dash year student uh, like uh, like porous uh, porous matre or uh, like dash dash, dash is a dash year uh, or third year student or fourth year student or uh, or uh, uh, in our college, uh, St. Jesus Medical College in KM Hospital, he is a good student. He is a uh, uh, he. Uh, uh, our language of medium is English. Uh, uh, he is a good st uh, student, etc., uh, etc. Et For KM students, the letter of good standing uh, uh, format is already available uh, at the UG office. So just change. You have to just change the name, uh, the purpose, and uh, uh, your expected graduation resume or cv you have to make uh, i did not explain that transcripts are spoken about lor you have, you can use the same lor for, for Kurana if somebody is also applying for Kurana. but if somebody is like uh, applying only for uh, is here only for electives uh, 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 so you have to you need just one letter of recommendation ideally from like it's not mentioned anywhere but uh, Ideally, it should be from a uh, uh, from a professor of your cho uh, you know from the field of your interest, and um, home school approval. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, they have to make sure that you are actually a student of their college. So what they do is once you click on that home school approval, you'll be able to add a name of a recommender, which could either be your uh, the same person who wrote your LOR, or it could be a UG office as well. Like you know, undergraduate or administrative office as well. So, uh, put in all the information I put off. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, Padmaja ma'am helped me with uh, this, and I didn't put any message, uh, but yeah, I sent sent to her what exactly is done by the uh, uh, at her at the recommender side, basically approval side of it. I don't really know. Probably there might be some link uh, and checkbox i don't know i really don't know what email is sent to them uh, but preferably use a uh, institutional id like for km students it would uh, for gsm students it will be uh, at km.edu so uh, again note the difference for Khurana, you your email should uh, ideally be your personal email but your mentors uh, your uh, references emails could be your uh, uh, could be uh, their institutional ID as well. Similarly, here it is actually compulsory to put in your put the institutional ID. If y'all don't have anything like an institutional ID, personal ID might work. So it might be it may as they say may be subject to additional review. So I don't know what the additional review means. And then once you send it to the recommender, uh, yours and and once you uh, submit the application, uh. No, no, like oh, once you send to the recommender and uh, it's approved by the uh, recommender, you have the option of submitting, uh, then uh, adding your signature. Uh, uh, it's not a actual scan signature, but if I remember correctly, it's a typed signature. Again, I don't remember. And then you review your uh, application once to uh, check the correctness of information and then you submit it. And then um, your mentor at your uh, at Hopkins would have to uh, uh, apply it. Uh, sorry, to have, have to accept it. Sorry for the uh, verbal mistake. Uh, the mentor would have to accept you officially through the uh, 
on the Wismet portal and uh, then you're done, you'll get the application. So uh, you will get the acceptance letter and then you start with your visa process and all of that. All right, that being said, um, with regards to the GH, uh, I'll solve some more queries now. With regards to the GHU elective and Kurana 2, although I'm pretty comfortable doing math, uh, I have never really been part of the research project since I joined. What skills are required are, uh, or are they required, or are they looking for in general to stand a good chance of getting that elective? Uh, again, I don't really know, but research in general, like you should know your research methodology, statistics, uh, like basically if you have not, you, if you don't have any publications, so uh, look for some courses from good, uh, from good, what do you say, resources, like good, uh, good sources uh, like you know Hopkins has one systematic review and meta-analysis project or uh, uh, a course on uh, Coursera similarly and if you have you if you're able to do the research that's awesome if you have publications that's more awesome if you have some if you have some uh, uh, if you have some uh, presentations at conferences that's also awesome Remember that uh, whether to accept a student or not is the decision of a mentor based on the availability of space and also what uh, in terms of your past experiences and your skills, what might be enough for one mentor for one faculty or attending might not be uh, enough for uh, other faculty and vice versa. So uh, note that like basically mention everything in your CV and uh, reach out to mentors. So uh, using that uh, CV. Uh, so what work did your uh, elective involve exactly? I think I have so spoken about it. What tools did you use? What skills were used? But basic research methodology, like I knew like how to do statistical analysis, uh, biostatistics I knew. Uh, in fact, you know advanced statistics, I believe being a math uh, major uh, math graduate. Uh, Sorry, uh, uh, yeah, skills also. I uh, I won't say new uh, again, all of it. I won't say new fully. I'm saying I had kind of some experience, uh, and I was like moderately fine, um, uh, uh, doing um, uh, like biostatistics, writing manuscripts, uh, doing data analysis out, like you no, know, uh, and using softwares, using like reference management, uh, how to submit, uh, uh, how to submit, how to prepare documents for uh, submission to journals, all of that uh, I knew. And academically and socially, I did share my um, experience previously. And yeah, I did to talk a lot with other residents. I get, I got to attend the grand rounds lectures, not the patient rounds, but lectures which happened in the Department of uh, Gynecology and Obstetrics. And they were, again, a uh, huge learning. I got to spoke to residents and fellows and yeah and uh, there were wellness wednesdays um, and yeah i think i have uh, shared about that enough and but how many publications to get in again there is no uh, hard and fast answer uh, uh how important is prior research experience you should have something because again it's Hans of, john hopkins is good but i think uh, People with minimal experience also have gotten in, uh, like, you know, gotten their research electives. I did, a, I do know a lot of uh, Indian medical students who got their research uh, electives. So, it, like, I, there's no hard, there's no uh, straightforward answer to it. So, sorry. I, I had, like, what, six-ish publications? But, uh, like, a lot, but many uh, completed but not published many presentations uh, and so on. So uh, the, I could just share about what I had and that's what I did. Uh, and, but I like, you also asked about what did your elective uh, involve exactly? I did research, of course, that it's a research elective and, but I can't share about the details of the five uh, researches I worked on uh, and I apologize for that because that is a matter of confidentiality of the lab and myself. So what is the ideal timeline I explained? How early I explained in the previous one? So I'm in a final year and have passed step one. Are there any specific points to be kept while mailing fa faculty 
uh, before applying for research elective. Could you share a template similar to yours for reference? So one thing is that again, like the uh, previous SOP uh, research statement and past experiences essays, you're also of Kurana application. You're also I'm not uh, comfortable sharing my uh, email because all my emails which I've sent till date, I firstly I never had the need to uh, quote unquote cold email. And per se, my uh, emails were not cold emails per se. Uh, my emails have always been very specific. What I basically, who I am. Um, and since I had the Quran question, I did mention uh, a couple of sentences about that. I mentioned uh, uh, like why I'm approaching them. Why do I want to work under them uh, with a specific mentor? So, uh, and yeah. I mean, my like my emails are always personalized, uh, and I made sure that I'm uh, tell them clearly, like you know why I want, you know why I'm inspired, you know find like uh, Dr. Seegers. Uh, I told him, uh, like I emailed him, like why I'm so inspired by him, and like I uh, t honestly told him, like uh, like on the email that. Uh, of course, all of this very respectfully and informal language, by the way, uh, that I uh, I did read a, a lot of his research and did um, uh, discuss them in my clinical postings or clinical rotations with my faculty and all of basically the same thing which I have been telling you all since a while. And uh, yeah, and you have to necessarily attach your uh, CV. Some professors might be expecting uh, attachment, attaching a personal statement. I'm not sure. I do not attach in, in my. In fact, my email content per se was more or less my personal uh, email, and all of the you know, the email has to be in good English with good voca vocabulary and grammar, and uh, it has it has to be personal. I will say, and. Uh, uh, yeah, again, I cannot. I'm sorry, but uh, I cannot send send a template. Again, please don't make uh, grammar vocabulary mistakes uh, or grammar mistakes typos in your email like this. Uh, so yeah, so that was one. And but don't forget to attach your CV and your format of the CV make it very good and look for your. Uh, Emailing templates if at all if you want to cold email like not a personal fan of personally not a fan of it But if you want to there are uh, Templates out there on the internet Then uh, can you explain the steps of how you applied for GHU? That's what I did and but however uh, all of these uh, Would have been ideal if you had taken a little efforts to look for information out there on the internet as I said It's really readily available Again, I don't want, I'm not trying to be uh, rude or uh, uh, anything like that. I'm just saying that when it comes like a huge opportunity like this, I would really want to tell you out of care and concern that it's because like life is hard out, you know, ahead. So you should be able to figure out everything. Uh, if see, I'm always uh, like I'm for that matter, I'm open to emails for specific questions if anybody has no like a lot of y'all did ask specific questions which about things which were not available online and that real like you know i did answer that but for such uh, questions i highly recommend uh, for even for the correctness of information because you know i again say that i don't take any responsibility for whatever information i have given so you would like to i would i would suggest you to uh look uh, on the web pages which i have uh, shown which i have shown uh, this one uh, this one and this one so so then i don't really understand this question the third the third question about the genetics i did read about it uh, but i did not understand the question uh, well uh, but uh, so I just kept it. Uh, so I still just like I don't understand it. I'm not ignoring any question uh, query which I received. 
a couple of queries i did uh, skip because uh, uh, they were similar to those and they were like uh, please explain in details how to apply for uh, elective uh, how to apply for khurana uh, what is and basically very basic questions uh, which were anyways going to be uh, covered in this session uh, but uh, one thing i mentioned here is i have just completed my uh, mbbs with uh, internship few months back remember that you can apply to uh, hopkins electives only as a medical student uh, once you're completed your internship you are you no longer retain the status of your uh, as a as a student and hence you cannot apply to the research elective uh, but i did not understand the first part of it advanced programs in genetics so if you're thinking of something like a post doctor or post doc uh, fellowship post doctor fellowship or research position that is totally different uh, with a scholarship at uh, uh, at ghu congratulations so i don't know what exact programs are this and i'm probably not the uh, best person to answer this questions and i would advise you to uh, look uh, on the information uh, on wherever you found out uh, those programs so uh, that information would either readily available on the website and if not i would suggest you to uh, emailing those uh, uh principal investigators of those labs or uh program or the administrative coordinators etc then how does the college verification of wismet portal work please elaborate what the college has to be do has to do i have explained but again like uh, you just have to add some professors or administrative sections uh, name and i don't know what email uh, do they get but it's i think it's pretty quick because it i think it's just a couple of clicks nothing uh, big then finally student currently is it a good time how to connect to a faculty has answered this elective at hopkins if uh, how to go about getting an elective at hopkins if our college does not have a tie up with them uh so like you for research electives your your college need not have a tie up anyways so don't worry about this so uh, you don't need to have a tie up so you can apply oh uh, anyways so i am a second year uh research, research elective in dermatology as it's competitive do they think uh, i don't know like I, i'm not a program director or program coordinator there or a pi there or a faculty there to know right uh, i could just give you some insights that i did see a lot of people uh, see i myself was in gynecology so of course uh, they accept gynecology i do one more person who who they accept for gynecology then uh, i didn't do know i do know a lot of people who did, who are doing their electives there at internal medicine and uh, uh, cardiology etc and also in neurosurgery uh, i know a couple of friends who have uh, been accepted i do know um uh sorry i do know uh my friend's friend uh, also was doing her research elective in ophthalmology so i believe gynecology ophthalmology are also equally uh, competitive uh, so i think you can give it a shot again you do not have to apply to wismet directly you have to email professors and try to get your uh, acceptance so that's that's the most i could uh, give insights about all right so but i have i have no way to know for sure so this is this uh is th with this we are uh i'm done with uh answering all queries explaining both the uh quran applic quran program for the for scholars application and uh johns hopkins university school of medicine research electives uh application as far as i could to the best of my knowledge i would again urge you all to look the official information out there and uh, i do not take the responsibility whatsoever but i am i wish you all all the best uh, for this elect uh, for this applications uh, both or either one of those and give your best don't uh, have the self rejection bias don't uh, doubt yourself don't uh, and uh, take care of yourself during the application process especially during the corona process and trust me both of these opportunities are huge opportunities uh, but they are not the end of the world 
keep trying i'll say and all the best you can uh, reach out to me on uh, uh, these are my social media and uh, other information uh, uh, we can uh, my research gate where you can see my research work my social media information linkedin or uh, twitter and instagram and if you want to reach out on to me on email uh, i could do that again thank you so much for listening patiently it was a very long session probably three hours i'm not sure uh i didn't uh, exactly check when i started recording this uh i hope you found it useful please share with others who you might think uh, would benefit from this session and uh, would uh, uh and our prospective applications the applicants of the either of the program uh, of the programs uh i thank you and wish you all the best again and have a nice day goodbye